Excellent. Um, so we, when we want, think of a paint system, I, I, I'd like you to think about it uh, in these three steps. Uh, again, proper, uh, complete surface preparation, uh, a primer if needed, um, or appropriate first coat, and then a finished coat. Um, screen again. Secondly, and you will be uh, later this morning, I believe, you will have one of your uh, applicator vendors here uh, for some of your sundries. And uh, they'll definitely give you some more information on that. But it, it, I want you to understand that it, it's very, very important to the finished project that the uh, person doing the project has the best quality tools they can get and the right tools. Um, so definitely have that chat uh, later today with, with your applicator vendor. Um, but I, I just a quick reference, I, I usually liken it to a sports car um, where the paint is a sports car and the uh, uh, the paintbrush or the roller is the, are the tires. And so to get the most out of that sports car, we're going to want the best tires we can get. And, um, and definitely um, that, that uh, follows right into the applicators as well. And then obviously considering the whole project, just making sure that our customers get everything they need before they leave the store. So let's take a quick look at finishes here. Um, and then we're going to go into product and then we'll go into a little bit of this discussion about talking to your customers and then we'll do a couple scenarios. Um, so <laughs> basically the, uh, the finish, uh, finishes start out at flat, work their way up to matte eggshell, all the way on up to high gloss. As um, the paint finish gets shinier or your gloss increases, you get improved durability, improved washability, better stain release, improved uh, abrasion resistance. Um, the negative there uh, is really twofold. One is it obviously tends to reflect a lot of light. Um, so if it's in a space or an area where we don't want a lot of uh, light reflecting. Uh, and secondly, more importantly, it tends to show and it will show surface defects. And actually, uh, the, if you get too high in sheen, it'll actually make them look a little worse than they really are. Uh, it's easy to think about when we see a car, you know, you got that high gloss finish on a car. If you got one tiny little dent in it, um, you can see it from a really long way away. Um, conversely, what happens as we go from the higher sheens down to the lower sheens, you get improved hide. The flatter products, the mats and the eggshell are going to have more solids in the can, which are going to equate to a little bit better hide. Um, they also tend to hide uh, surface imperfections a little bit. Um, so uh, a lot of times people say, well, when would I use a, a mat versus an eggshell versus maybe a satin? Um, obviously, it's going to depend a little bit on the space and, and the uh, use of the space, but it can also depend on the condition of the walls. If they've got a lot of repairs, a lot of paint's been happening over the years, and the walls aren't very smooth anymore, um, and they're not going to, you know, um, sand them down and, and skim coat them or anything like that to get them back to where they, they used to look like when they were nice and smooth and new, um, then we would definitely go down a little bit and sheen. Um, or conversely, if someone says, hey, we're painting in an area where we're going to get a lot of abuse, a lot of use, um, then we want to go up the, the, the sheen chart a little bit. So that's a, a brief um, the brief synopsis on, uh, on sheen. And I think most of us kind of grasp that. So I don't want to spend too much time in here. If there's a specific question, just pop that in the chat and we'll, we'll answer that. Um, so for this module, um, we want you to identify some key properties of some of the top interior selling products to build your knowledge and confidence uh, when talking with customers. And that, that's really the big thing there, right? We want to feel confident in what we're saying uh, and recommend the best solution based on your customer's needs. And what I mean by that, a lot of times people ask me, well, what's your best paint? <clears throat> to be honest, without um, asking a few more questions and getting more information, I really can't say. I mean, typically I default to Aura. Right. But if they say all of a sudden they start saying, well, for um, water tanks, you know, exterior water tanks, I'm going to say, yeah, no, the aura isn't the best. I have a different product for that. Right. Or if they're going to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm reparty, uh, repainting apartments that, you know, cycle out every year. But I'd certainly love for someone like that to buy aura, but I wouldn't expect them to. Right. That's probably not the best paint for their intended use. So before we can get to the best paint for them, we need to get some information about them. So there's two things we need to have, two pieces of information before we can make a best solution for our customer. One is to understand the product. 
and two is the second one is to understand their need. And then we could marry those two together and come up with the best solution for our customers. So let's take a quick look at some of the products. And then we'll talk a little bit about how to speak with our customers to get some information from them. And then finally re review those scenarios. So let's take a look at uh, some of the Benjamin Moore interior paint. We'll talk a little bit about the Ace brand of paint and a little bit uh, one or two things that products in here. So Aura Waterborne is by far the finest interior paint that Benjamin Moore has made. It has fantastic color depth. Uh, it literally accepts a little bit more colorant than other products to really form that a good, rich, strong uh, uh, color appearance. It has extreme high, um, so it's going to take fewer coats in some cases. Um, this is especially true when we start talking about darker colors like reds or, or uh, yellows or something like that. A lot of times, just because, and it's a conversation to have with your customers, just because you're spending more on a gallon of paint doesn't mean your cost per square foot on the wall is going to go up. Sometimes it can go down, right? So if I'm painting an off-white wall with a similar off-white color, by using order, your cost per square foot will probably go up a little bit versus some lesser, uh, lesser price products. Uh, if you flip that, and you're painting an off-white wall now to a deep bright red, um, your cost per square foot on the wall, if you use Aura, will probably be cheaper uh, and it will certainly uh, use less labor to put it on because you'll use fewer coats. Uh, Aura also stands up to repeated washings with no color rub off. And what that means basically is when we clean and wash our walls, um, we're not getting that color transfer to our, uh, our, our rag or our sponge. And uh, so we're not turning the white rag pink um, and those types of things. And then finally, it's engineered with Gen X color technology, as well as what we call color lock technology in the Aura. And let me show you a little picture of what this is here. On the left side of your screen, you've got the, a view of a standard paint where those black circles represent the latex or the acrylic uh, resin that's in the paint. The little red dot represents pigment particles. And in standard paint, you know, um, paint is mixed in. We, we shake the color in and, and the surface and as it dries wherever the colorant is in the paint film it dries there so you can notice some of those paint uh, the little red dots are facing the outside um, some of them are facing more of the inside and what happens when we clean that wall or rub up against the wall or do and something like just... we got a little bit of background noise there we go um, so in the uh, standard paint film some of these pigment particles will be right on the surface. So if we clean the surface or abrade the surface or, or bump into the surface, we can get some of that color transfer. Uh, it's also not protected from environmental contamination, dust, dirt, as well as um, ultraviolet light and things like that. On the other side, on the right side of the screen is the aura with what we call, again, the color lock technology. The same thing's going on here, uh, that the black circles represent the, the latex resin and the, uh, the red circles represent the pigment particle. And what happens when we put aura, the colorant in with aura, the aura, the aura resin, the latex resin, literally surrounds that colored pigment and locks it into place. So it gives it protection from the environment. It gives it for, uh, some protection from ultraviolet light, and it gives it protection for when we wash and clean the surface. It also allows the surface to kind of pack in a little tighter together. So the tighter those are packed in together, the more resistant they are to allowing stains to penetrate into the surface, which makes stains a lot easier to clean off. And that's what the color lock technology is. In the um, <clears throat> and I said earlier, I was gonna mention a password. And since we're talking about Aura here, the password for this morning's class for Benjamin Moore is Aura Matt. And I'll say that one more time towards the end. Um, so hopefully everybody gets that. So the next uh, finish we have up here is the Regal Select. The Aura was available in four finishes, a matte, an eggshell, a satin, and a semi-gloss. The Regal Select, we have five finishes in here. Uh, there's a flat finish, uh, a matte finish, an eggshell, what we call a pearl finish, which is similar to a satin. It's kind of a little bit on the low side of a satin. And then we have the semi-gloss color. Uh, it's got great coverage and a uniform finish. Uh, the Regal's been around for a very, very long time with Benjamin Moore. The first Regal product came out in the 50s. Um, the Regal product is engineered with color, uh, the Gen X color technology, um, which means that when we 
add the Gen X colorant to the Benjamin Moore uh, engineered and created paint that we get a, an additional benefit of Gen X color technology, which the Aura has, but the Aura has the addition of the color lock technology with the Gen X color technology. So it has that one step ahead. Uh, and then finally, one of the biggest factors of the Regal, besides having a strong name and great coverage and hide and durability is that it is another product that has some really great stain release. And that's really important. A lot of times uh, some people get hung up on scrubability and durability, and those are important tests, but the scrubability test that the industry uses does not have anything to do with how well a stain comes out of a paint film, right? So it's great that I can scrub a wall maybe 5,000 times, but if the stain's not coming up, it's not going to make me a very happy camper, right? Or if after the first scrub or two, the wall or the paint film is so damaged that we need to touch up that spot, that's not really going to do anything. And understand those scrubability tests really don't measure stain release, and they don't measure what the paint film looks like after just a few scrubs. So let's take a quick look at uh, one of the, one of the good property of the Regal Select is, uh, is really good hide. Uh, this is a color uh, from Benjamin Moore called Caliente. The Regal Select is on the left there, you can see. And that's going over kind of an extreme situation. We don't expect this in most of our consumers, uh, but it does happen. Uh, we have it going over some smoke damage, a gray stripe, lipstick, crayon, and things like that. Um, the left part of the left side of the screen is one coat of Regal Select in uh, matte finish for the color Caliente. And the second or the, the uh, right side of the left screen is the second coat of the Regal Matte. We can see that second coat really did a great job. It looks like it's pretty much ready to go with that second coat. There might be an area here or there that's not perfect, but again, this is pretty extreme compared to what most of our consumers will be doing with the, the color. I, I Hopefully they won't be going over all those stains at the same time. Uh, they have a very interesting home if they've got all that going on in there. And then on the uh, right side of the screen is a national competitor. And there's two things I really want you to notice. One is that first of all, the national competitor, uh, according to their literature, claims that their product is an equivalent to Regal. So if someone was specified Regal, they say, here, this is our replacement for Regal. So this is what they say. Um, two things to notice. One is the, the a lack of hide on the right side of the left screen there. We can really see through it with that one coat. But even on that second coat, there are definitely some areas there that are not passable, and it's for sure going to need that third coat, right? Again, this is kind of a, a worst case scenario, if you will. Uh, but it does show the, uh, the the amount of hide, the difference. So the cost per square foot of Regal, even though probably costs a few more dollars a gallon than the competitor does, um, the cost per square foot is going to actually be cheaper here because you're going to use fewer coats and less labor. So that means either you with the roller or paying somebody to roll it for you, right? Um, and then finally, the other thing I really want you to take note of, <coughs> excuse me here, is the color and the color variation. The, uh, the competitor on the right there, the color is off. It's not right. And even that second coat and the third coat's not going to get there because the color itself is, is not there. Uh, Benjamin Moore, we use, um, and you guys have seen it, it's in your store. We have three different reds plus the magenta in the line. Um, so it really makes it hard for competitors to match our colors because we make our own colorants in-house as well. So we have our own colorants, our own formula. Uh, and, and make all that stuff in house. So it gets really hard for competitors to match the colors. It's gonna be a lot easier now, obviously, for some of the these branded products because we're, we're using the same color, which is great. Um, but I want you to know uh, nationally, uh, we did a lot of testing with our competitors, especially in the big box and some of the other large paint manufacturers and um, fewer than 20% uh, of the time, which over 80% of the time, our national competitors colors did not match what we would consider a color matching to our, our product, right? Some of them were down into the single digits, right? Eight, 9% of the time, they were within our uh, margin of error to be at that color. So it's really important if you're talking to your customers about Benjamin Moore color, uh, make sure that you explain to them if that color is really, really important, it really should probably be in a Benjamin Moore product. So let's move on to the next screen here. Uh, ben Interior, similar um, uh, to the other products, uh, is for, this one, although particular, was formulated for easy painting and a little bit more for the novice painter. It has uh, the, the Regal and the Aura have what we call an acrylic 
latex, which is great for some things. Um, but uh, the Ben has a, a blended acrylic. And what that does is it, it gives the paint, it doesn't dry out as fast. It gives it what we call a little more open time. So if you're a novice painter or a slow painter, um, it does a really nice job in staying open so we can fix any drips or mistakes that we made before the paint film dries and then we have to sand it and come back and, and repaint it. Um, it does a great job with that. It does a great job with touch up as well. Uh, one thing to remember about the, not just about Ben, but about any paint in the world, whether it's a CK, whether it's a, a Sherwin Williams or a Benjamin Moore, there's absolutely no paint in the world that's going to touch up until the color and the sheen in the walls are set. So remember, we looked at that red, regal red color and it looked really good, right? And it, it might be passable for most of us. A uh, few of us, maybe it's not quite as passable for them, but for most of us, it looked pretty passable. Uh, I want you to understand though that that color although it looked really good and relatively even, still was probably not completely set. So if a color is not set, you cannot touch it up. So just make, I just wanna make that clear to everybody. And there's no paint in the world that can do that until the color is set. Uh, it does, even though it has a little bit of an extended open time to work with it, it does um, you know, cure out relatively quickly, which allows for a quick return to service. And this just does have the uh, Gen X color technology, but not the color lock like the Aura. Uh, the other difference is the Ben is limited to sheens. There's a flat, an eggshell, and a semi-gloss. So we don't have that matte finish and we don't have like a pearl or a satin in the Ben line. Um, it's a nice upseller discussion to your customer to um, you know maybe start talking about Regal if they're looking for a different sheen or maybe another product. And let's go with it as well. Uh, and the other product maybe be, being a Clark and Kensington talk about that in a minute. One thing I want you to see with the Ben here, um, it resists sagging. And this is important because we do, we obviously we don't want paint it. We want to be able to put it on the wall or paint it on a door or something like that, not have it sag off and run. But we do want to have a little bit of sagging to it or a little bit of what we call flow and level. So brush marks come out, that roller stipple kind of calms down. So there's a fine line with the paint where you don't want it uh, too thick, you want, but you don't want it too thin. The Ben, we've done a great job. The, the visual on the screen here is basically what we call a, um, a sag bar. And the, um, it basically just, uh, you put the wet paint on there and you pull this bar across it and it leaves varying thicknesses of paint behind. The thickest paint is at the bottom and the thinnest paint is at the top. Um, so as the paint gets thicker and thicker, it's more likely to sag, right? And you can tell on the Benjamin Moore side, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kind of almost eight lines before we start losing it completely by the ninth line here so that's a good thing it means that a it's going to have some flow and level but b it's not going to start dripping off if you get it on a little too heavy uh the national big box competitor on the right side here has one two maybe three lines before it starts sagging so it might have decent flow and level but if you get it on a little heavy or you get a, a little buildup in a corner because of the way you're brushing it, you're very likely to get some sags in this film, right? Um, so that's an important note. Um, finally, uh, to finish, round out the Benjamin Moore products, this is our, our advanced waterborne interior alkyd. And it is, um, just to avoid confusion, it is 100% alkyd. It is an oil-based paint. There is no latex resin. There is no acrylic in this. Um, the difference between this and a classic or typical oil-based paint is we use uh, water as the thinner in here versus your typical oil-based paint would use something like a mineral exchange. Uh, it does dry to a, a, a very hard furniture-like finish. Um, so it is an alkyd and an oil when it dries and cures. It just applies a little bit more like a water-based paint because, it, again, it doesn't it has the water for the solid and not... Um, and not something like mineral spirits. There are four finishes in the advanced line. There's a matte finish, uh, a, um, a satin, a semi-gloss, and high gloss. It's also available in a ready-made black color. So if someone needs that for a project or something like that, we can always get it in, in, in that black color. So let's move on to the Clark and Kensington Premium Interior. Uh, the interior paint has six finishes including a high gloss, which is an interior exterior, which makes it kind of nice and universal. Um, it is very durable with exceptional scrubability. Um, it has a stain resistant finish. So this is another one where it 
state office finish pretty well. Uh, obviously, it, it does dry down to a very nice smooth finish. Uh, and it has been formulated to have ease, easy application. Uh, and it is low in VOC. Uh, VOC stands for volatile organic compound. And there are certain things in, in latex-based paints that are like that. Um, typically, we put things like glycols in them that will help with freeze-thaw and will also help with keeping the paint wet while it's still in the can. You know, nobody, everybody wants paint to dry in the wall. Nobody wants to dry in the can, right? So there's a little balance there. And uh, some of those VOCs help balance that out in the cans. Um, hey, Brian, Brian yes. sorry to interrupt again. You were doing really good and it keeps going up and down again. Maybe try to reset what you did before and see if it'll work. Sure. It might be my voice too, maybe I'm. Well, you're, no, it's not your voice. It's like the computer keeps fading in and out. It might be your speaker. Um, I'm not sure if taking off the headset and just doing it through your computer might be a shot to see if it works better. All right, well, we could try that for sure. Uh, is that any better? Yes, so far it is. So far, okay, well, hopefully it won't be a problem. I'm not sure what's going on. I'll have to contact our IT department because I was having a similar problem yesterday. Okay, yeah, that seems better for now, so thank you. Better, thank you. Sure. Um, so again, the Clark and Kennington um, is a, uh, a easy application and low in VLC. All the products we talked about so far also have the wording paint and primer in one or paint plus primer uh, or something like that. Understand for the most part that that's, um, you know, relatively, I don't want to necessarily say true, but useful information uh, as long as we're not going over anything that um, has exceptional problems like a bleeding stain or massive repairs in the wall, um, or maybe we're coating over something that's kind of uh, high gloss and hard to stick to. In that case, with all these products, we probably want to consider using a primer, but we're not going to feel too much about get into primers today because we do have limited time. The uh, next product I'd like to talk to you about is the Ace Royal. Um, it's a, it has it's great durability and great hiding in a product, especially at the price point, right? This is a really nice value product uh, where the price is and the quality of the product, you know, price and quality meet, and this is a great place. Um, it has excellent washability, a scuff resistant finish. And we do drop down to uh, four sheens versus the six in the Clark and Kensington. And that's pretty typical. Normally the higher uh, or the, the more expensive uh, and the higher quality offerings typically will have more sheens. And as you go down, the gloss levels or sheen levels will, will start to dissipate. True with the, the Benjamin Moore, Ben obviously only has the three. Now Regal has five versus Aura having only four, but Regal's been around for a lot longer than those sheens have been around for a lot longer than Aura. So let's take a look at uh, another one here, the Clark and Kennington Cabinet Door and Trim Paint. I mentioned the Advance is 100% oil-based paint. There is no link. Now, this Clark and Kennington cabinet and door trim paint is a little bit different. This is actually an acrylic blend with an oil resin. So we actually have acrylic and we have oil both in this product, which is going to give it a little bit of a different properties from Advance. One of the things to know about Advance is that if we do want to give it at least eight hours, if not overnight to dry, because it is an all oil-based paint. And when it starts to dry out, it really inhibits any moisture or water that's left in the paint from evaporating. So it can take a long time for it to dry. If we put a really heavy coat on or if we rush the second coat of advanced, we can set it up so the product stays relatively sticky and doesn't get hard for quite some time. And, and I've seen that happen. With the cabinet, uh, the Clark Tenzing cabinet door and trim paint, we don't necessarily have that, that worry with it. It's gonna dry out quicker for a faster recoat time. Um, obviously uh, resist grease and stains. And again, this is waterborne alkyl enamel, but it's, I want you, it's a waterborne alkyl acrylic blend is what it is. Uh, and this one still cleans up with soap and water. We do thin this one still with water as well. Uh, there are two sheens in here. Uh, we have the semi-gloss and the satin finish. Uh, at the advanced, we had the benefit of having the uh, matte finish as well as a high gloss. Uh, but in here we have a uh, the, the satin and the semi-gloss, which is obviously probably the two most popular finishes for cabinets and things like that. 
Uh, the next one is the Insulux cabinet coat. And there's a reason why I have all three of these in here. The advanced, the Clark Kensington cabinet, uh, cabinet door and trim paint, as well as this Insulux cabinet coat, because they kind of all three occupy the same territory. And people get a little confused about when and where to use which one or, or which one to recommend. So the advanced had that 100% alkyd formula. The Clark and Kensington cabinet door and trim paint had that acrylic alkyd blended formula. And Inslux has what we call a, a urethane acrylic. Um, so we have three different resins going on here. Well, what's a urethane acrylic? Basically, we, we, the urethane does two things for the cabinet coat. One is it gives it that extra hardness, right? We think of urethanes. We think of putting them on floors and things like that. Uh, polyurethanes, right? So they're, they're very hard. The other thing it does is it gives the cabinet coat a little extra adhesion advantage. Uh, that urethane really does a great job of biting into surfaces uh, like the glossy surfaces of cabinets, especially if they haven't been sanded. Of course, we're going to recommend that they sand the cabinets, um, but if the, the, the sanding isn't the best job or they don't want to do it, this is a great choice because it's going to bite nicely into that surface. It does give us a smooth finish, similar to the Clark and Kensington cabinet uh, and door and trim paint. It's just available in two glosses the uh, satin finish and the semi-gloss finish. And um, um, that's probably the biggest difference there. And again, it, it uh, adheres to hard to coat to surfaces without a blind. So we'll talk a little bit about the products. And I, I said early on, there are two things that we need to know before we can recommend the best solution to our customers. One, we need to understand the products. I know I went over them a little quickly, but I think most of us have a little base of an idea of kind of the, the, what the products are. Um, and then the second thing is we have to find out what our customers, you know, what our customers' expectations are, what, what they're going to do. And uh, hopefully by looking at this guide and, and going over it a little bit, we can kind of get there and figure out what our customers' needs are. So we're going to want to find out a little bit more about the customer's project. And to do that, I, we need to ask what we call open-ended questions. Open-ended questions are just simply questions that you, you can't necessarily answer with a quick yes or no or a simple answer like that. A great question to ask is what, what will the space be used for? Or how will it, uh, it be used? What do you envision the finished product to look like? That's really important. What do you, in your mind, what do you think this is going to look like? Or how do you think this project is going to go? So we want to ask open-ended questions to gather information from our customer. And then we want to ask closed-ended questions to confirm that we know something. Um, a lot of times we'll say, okay, so you told me that you're going to redo your cabinets and you want a paint that's going to work for them, but you only got a day and a half to do the whole project. Did I understand you correctly? And then they can answer the yes or the no. If they say no, then it's time to dig a little bit deeper because we don't have that understanding with our customer just yet. But the open-ended questions are really going to be the ones that get the information out there. So it's a definitely a good idea to practice those, to maybe talk to some of your associates in the store or watch somebody who does a really good job. Maybe it's not even in the paint department. Maybe it's in the uh, uh, plumbing department or something like that. Um, but asking those open-ended questions, a good general question to get um, their thoughts and their view on what they think the, the finished product's gonna look like and the process for that matter, right? Um, because we do have to talk to them a little bit about the process. If someone's painting their kitchen cabinets, you know, they might not sand them. And, and we're going we're gonna to say, obviously, the best results, we're going to want you to sand them. One thing I can guarantee you with kitchen cabinets is they have to be clean, right? That's a fact, right? We're talking about all waterborne products here. And waterborne products do not coat over grease and oil very well, right? Oil-based products don't do it very well either. But water-based products certainly don't do it. Um, so definitely going to have to be clean. But what are their expectations about preparation, about the project itself? And then finally, uh, we're going to we want to talk to them a little bit about their preferences. What type of performance do you expect? Um, what what in environment is this going to be put into? Um, there's a lot of different environments in homes. And I'm not just talking about, you know, the physical environment, about temperature, but more so about use and abuse, right? I mean, there are some homes that have, you know, front hallways where they've got three, four, five teenagers running around and, and children banging up against the walls and different things going on. And then there's, um, you know, maybe an older retired couple that has a spare bedroom that they're painting. Those two uses are completely different, right? Um, 
And we're still talking about interior walls for the consumer level. So we need to find out their preferences, um, the performance, the environment that the paint's gonna be put on in. And then of course, we always have to find out a little bit about their budget, right? If they're very budget minded, that's gonna really kind of direct our minds into what products we're thinking about to sell them, right? Um, if they're you know, the person that really wants just their absolute best look of everything and, and, and you know, budget obviously is, is, a, is a concern for most people, but their biggest concern is aesthetics and how great it's going to look. Then we can start thinking of some of the higher tier products. And finally, when we, when we get that information from the products and the preferences, we can then, um, or from the project and the preferences, we can then start recommending products. And uh, let's take a look at the next screen. I'm going to actually go into some customer scenarios that hopefully will, will help us out a little bit. I'm going to look at two overall arching scenarios. I'm going to go over kind of my recommendations and what I would say. And then uh, I think we'll be just about time for the questions towards the end here. I do want to say before, uh, I mentioned it earlier, the password. Uh, and I said I would say it early, and I'll say it again a little bit later, and I'll say it here. So the, the password that you need is Aura Matt. So one more time, Aura Matt. And that's the, the password for this class. So here's the interior wall scenario. So we went through our, our, our preferences uh, in our project with our customers. And for the first one, we learned that your customer wants a bright red Benjamin Moore color really bright red, a very tough color to hide. Well, one, one key I can say when we're thinking about sometimes, well, first we have to figure out, you know, maybe we'll go um, Ace branded, maybe Benjamin Moore branded. I'm not too sure which way to go. One kind of a clue, and I don't want this to be the only thing, uh, is the color. If someone brings in a Benjamin Moore color, it's probably better to stick them in a Benjamin Moore paint, right? Or if they choose one. If they chose a CK color, it's probably better to keep them in, you know, CK or Royal. It's definitely not a mistake, though, if someone picks a Benjamin Moore color, certainly to put them even in, in Royal, uh, certainly CK, that's not an issue, but it's just a little kind of bump into that direction. Uh, one thing you do need to understand about the color is the Benjamin Moore paint was the, the formula, the, the, the matches to the, the CK colors and the Sherwin-William colors, the Bear colors and all the other ones, our computer matched colors, right? They get scan, scanned into a computer. The computer spits out a formula. We put it in the, the color software, right? Those colors have never been made. Now, most of the time, they're really close, but sometimes they're not so great, especially when we start getting into brighter and deeper and stronger presence types of colors. Same thing's true with the Clark and Kensington and Ace Royal. Obviously, the, the, the colors, the, the, the colors, have been formulated in those products, but the other matches like the Benjamin Moore or to Cheryl Williams or to whatnot, those are uh, calculated types of matches and things like that. So kind of keep that in mind. So color can be an indicator, doesn't have to be the overwhelming choice, um, but it can be just a, a little signal for you guys. So once a bright red Benjamin Moore color, I think right away a bright red color, something tough to hide, I'm gonna probably start thinking about Aura right away, right? Unless I hear something else from the customer, they're on a really tight budget or something like that, then I'll have to start readdressing my thought process there. Uh, how about if we learn that my customer wants to repaint a rental unit, something that they repaint you know, yearly or every other year as tenants move in and out? Well, I'm certainly not gonna be start thinking about those premium products, right? I'm probably gonna think about something a little bit more price sensitive and a good value. In this situation, I probably think a, a lot more about our um, the Ace Royal. We're not going to talk about it, but there is a, a, a contractor pro line or a commercial line. Uh, that would be a great choice here as well. But as far as the choices that we have, uh, repainting that rental unit, probably the my mind would go to the Royal product here. Uh, has a limited paint experience and has a BM color, but they're on a budget. Uh, right here, okay, BM color, I'm thinking Benjamin Moore. Uh, I'm thinking maybe CK, um, and on a limited budget, it has limited paint experience here. Um, maybe, again, thinking of the Benjamin Moore color, I'd probably push them a little bit more towards Ben because of that extended open time in the Ben product and their paint experience level. They might have a, a better experience working with it. Uh, but if they wanted to, say, go to a matte finish or something like that, then we might have to start thinking about, you know, Regal or CK or something like that. And then finally, that last scenario that I have up here is a 
a customer picked a CK color uh, and expects good or great results, right? Well, my mind right goes right to CK, right? They pick the CK color, they want great results. Um, mine's will go straight to the CK here, right? Um, so no problems. I, I want you to understand that for most of these, you know, there really isn't a right or a wrong answer. It's more about your interpretation of what you learn from your customer and, and kind of the gauge of how you feel and, and what type of a customer there are and what their expectations are for the product. If we, for the first one, say, wants a bright red Benjamin Moore color, we decided to recommend Clark and Kensington, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that, right? Um, if, you know, they want to repaint the rental unit and, and you sold them Aura, well, it, again, it's, it's a great sale for us. It, it you know, might not be the best value for them, um, but it's not a wrong choice. There was probably a better choice, but it's not wrong, right? I, I don't want you to think of it as being wrong. Not like the part won't fit or it won't work, right? It'll work and it'll fit. It just might've been a better one for them. So I, I don't want you to think in terms of a lot of times of right and wrong. I, I, I prefer you think in terms of better, a better choice for our customer. And then the last, Set of scenarios I want to uh, look over quickly here are recommendations for kitchen cabinets. Again, hey, you know, Brian. Do... Yes. Brian, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we're running out of time. So do you okay. want to go to the you want me to do the questions really quick? Yeah, to so give me one minute and sure. I'll do these real quick. Sure. So if you learn your customer needs to finish over a weekend, uh, Clark and Kensington or the Insulux will be good because we know it takes the advance longer to dry. Wants a bright white color, again, the Clark and Kensington or the Insulux because, and I didn't mention this, Advance is 100% oil and oils will amber a little bit with time. So they'll get a little bit yellow with time. Advance resists it, but it's not immune to it. Um, next one has time and wants it to look like a factory finish. This is an advanced one for sure because it is 100% alkan oil based. It's going to lay down really, really nice. And then finally, the last one will clean, but doesn't want to sand. We'll get that a lot. And then here, probably the Insulex cabinet coat would be the best choice because of that urethane resin will help bite into that surface. So hopefully I gave you guys a little bit of, uh, of what to look out for and in, 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 you know, how to deal with your customers. So let's go ahead and take some of those questions. So the first question, Brian, is does the higher sheen improvements for wall paint translate to the advanced paint too, or is the sheen just a personal preference for this paint? Well, no, advanced, like every paint, the higher in sheen you go, the more durable it's going to be. The better stain release, the more scrubbability you're going to get. And it, it's pretty independent of, she, of a product line. It's, it's more uh, involved with sheen. Now, there are products that are so strong, like say, or an eggshell, where I could compare it to Ben semi-gloss and that durability might be the similar. So product can dictate it, but even within the own product line, the higher in sheen, the more durability you're gonna get. Okay. With the Inslex cabinet paint, do you do multiple coats and do you have to sand between if so? Um, well, it, the, the multiple coats is going to depend on how well it's covering and hiding. So it's going to depend on what color you're going over and what color the paint is. Um, it is, I mean, you don't have to sand between coats for best smoothest results, no matter what you're using and, and cabinets or something like that. If it's going to be a, a you know, semi-gloss finish or a satin finish, sanding between coats is just going to help that smooth out the finish. It's not required for adhesion though. Okay, someone wants to know if we can get a copy of the PowerPoint to put on their paint computer at their helpful hub. Uh, this one, sure, I can send, I can send it to Adam and Deanna and uh, they can disperse it that way. Okay, and the last question, with new drywall, actual primer should be applied versus paint and primer? I, I, you know, a lot of the products will say that they can go over bare drywall and they'll do a decent job. Remember your primer's designed to go over that bare wall. So it's gonna do a really good job of sealing it, making for a nice uniform finish for the top coat. And remember the primers are less expensive. You know, everybody always talks about price, 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 but then they wanna use an expensive top coat as a primer, right? If we're gonna prime and have to put another coat on, or two on top of it, why not use the primer? I, in my house, I would put the primer on. Can you not use a primer? Yes, you can, but it's going to take a little bit more paint and your, your color and your sheen. It might take a little more to make that, that nice and set um, versus using a, a good primer. 
And the very last question is, Inselect's cabinet is on closeout in ASNAC, question mark. Um, I can't answer that with full certainty, but that is not my understanding. Okay. Well, we can look into that. Um, Brian, thank you so much. That was amazing. Thank you for being our first trainer and going right. through the glitches. We appreciate it. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, this is certainly unusual and odd, uh, looking at my computer screen and not seeing all your faces. Um, hopefully, you all recognize me and know who I am. I've been in, I hope, all of your stores, except for some of you over in Indiana. Um, so I'm going to just jump right in because uh, we are kind of tight on time. And obviously, we have so many brands and so many things to talk about. I am not going to get into everything. I do not have time for all the different brands and things that we um, uh, sell and, and you guys stock. So if I miss something that you uh, have a question about, please chat it and we'll address it at the end. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say that um, Rust-Oleum, I'm not going to give you a whole big backstory about us, but we are this year celebrating our 100th anniversary. Uh, we have been selling uh, Stops Rust uh, paint for a hundred years. We started in 1921. So kind of a big accomplishment, uh, quite proud of that. And um, hopefully at some point this year, we'll be doing something to celebrate that. Um, however, that is obviously uh, challenging with all the craziness in the world today. So speaking of that, um, I'm gonna advance my, hopefully advance my slide here. And there we go. All right, first thing I wanna talk about are some cleaners. Uh, hot topic, obviously. Um, everybody is uh, really still interested in making sure that they are disinfecting and cleaning their home uh, and all the surfaces. And I want you to know that we do have several brands that you guys are carrying uh, in the stores um, that are certified to kill the, uh, the SARS virus, uh, which uh, leads to Corona. Um, so the crud cutter disinfectants, the heavy duty disinfectants are definitely in there. Um, you can see uh, on discovery, we've got the 32 ounce spray. Um, I got the ACE number there at the bottom, um, but they are uh, a disinfectant, uh, will kill um, pretty much all bacteria. So this is a great item to have. Um, we did last year because of demand on this particular item come up with a five gallon drum. Uh, that's what that big bottle is at the, on, on the bottom of the pictures there. Uh, it is not stocked by Ace, but if you needed it, it's something we could definitely talk about because uh, I know some stores do sell bigger quantities of different things. Um, the nice thing about this is that it is not a bleach based formula. All crud cutter uh, cleaners are, um, uh, eco-friendly, eco safe for the environment. Um, there's uh, something called a quat, which I think most of you have probably heard that term, but quats are what is used for disinfectants um, and they are non-harmful. They are not a bleach. They are not a, uh, a really harsh chemical, uh, but very effective at killing uh, bacteria. All right, so um, a few other SKUs that are involved here. This is um, very similar product actually to the, the previous SKU. I'm just gonna flip back real quick that 32 ounce bottle there and the 32 ounce bottle here. Um, I've had several stores question these two SKUs. Um, honestly, this item um, has been in some CAG ads. We've advertised it in the last few years. Um, it is part of our household cleaner line um, and really marketed more into that uh, category and fits really well into obviously grocery stores, to be honest with you. Um, the previous SKU that I showed you earlier is your discovery item. Uh, it does carry a slightly higher retail. Uh, the truth is there's not much difference between these two SKUs. Okay. In fact, there really isn't a difference. Um, so do what you need with that information. Decide to carry one. I don't think you need both. Um, however, it was decided by ACE last year with, um, you know, just scrambling to get product that they wanted to have both in the, in the system. So that's why both of them are in your stores right now. Um, but there's really no difference in them. Um, another brand that we own is called Mean Green. Um, you've probably seen a few of these SKUs uh, floating around your stores too. We advertised this, I believe, a year ago um, in CAG ad. Um, so the antibacterial uh, SKU clearly uh, shouts out that it's going to kill bacteria. Uh, is another one that will definitely kill the coronavirus. Um, this one, uh, the Mean Green SKUs are a really nice price point. Uh, they're very effective. Uh, efficient in, in, in what they do, uh, a great um, formulation that works extremely well, but
but always at a lower retail and lower cost um, than what we would call our national brand. So these SKUs are great for the stores to carry um, because they're an, a really nice price point for your customer and the store owner makes some money off of them as well. Um, and then the other SKU in this line is our Pine Power. Uh, this is a disinfectant as well. Um, literally, you know, kind of the same thing as Pine Sol. All right, so it's gonna have that piney smell. Uh, Pine Sol is kind of an old school cleaner, been around forever, right? Same with this one, um, but they are extremely effective at uh, disinfecting things. Um, typically, you know, people are looking more for convenience factor with the spray bottle. So the previous SKU I showed you is probably a better seller. However, uh, when, you know, when you need, uh, when you need a disinfectant, um, this one works just as well as anything else. All right, that is it for cleaners. Obviously, and real quick with cleaners, I just touched base on a few, you know, SKUs that we stock uh, that are, these are the, the, the sole disinfectant ones. That's all I focused on. There's lots more cleaners that we do carry, uh, different brands from, you know, Wink to Rotor Rooter and a few others. Um, so if there are any other questions about those brands, please uh, chat them and we'll talk about them at the end. Um, all right. So I think this is as good a place as any to give you my password. It is Zinzer123. So Zinzer is in the primer, 123. All right. Moving forward, um, new product line that we launched this uh, about a year ago, actually, I'm sorry, last March, called Rustoleum Home or RO Home for short. This is a pretty exciting product. Um, I've actually used it myself and really kind of a, a bit of a game changer. Uh, really like it. It is a floor paint. Um, many, many of you guys have brought this product in with the new discovery um, planograms for the concrete coating section. Uh, we have a small four ski assortment that is um, into that new planogram. And as a side note, if you do have the product in the store and you do not have any literature, you do not have any color cards, please contact me. My information is at the very end of this presentation. It's the last slide. So I'll leave it up at the end. Um, I can get you the color cards. You guys will need them. Ace did not provide them. So if your store has this product line and you do not have those color cards, please, please reach out to me. But this product, guys, is really cool because it is a floor paint. It is um, a latex-based two-step process where a customer can transform any interior hard floor surface into a brand new painted surface. All right. So basically we can paint anything but carpet. Obviously, carpeting isn't gonna hold up very well with paint on it. So this guy here, uh, the customer, um, it, it can be put into any room, anything they wanna do. Um, bathrooms are very popular, kitchens, obviously, hallways, um, basement floors, concrete, absolutely can paint on this. Uh, it goes on ceramic tile, vinyls and, and uh, laminates, hardwood floor even. Uh, not that most people wanna paint hardwood floor, but it can go over it. Uh, it is designed to, um, act just like a wall paint. So the gallons cover 400 square feet, just like a gallon of wall paint. The quartz will cover 100 square feet. Uh, obviously a quart is a pretty um, decent amount for most uh, projects in the home, as far as the 100 square foot coverage goes. So there's two tint bases. We've got a light tint and a dark tint, and then um, two top coat options. There's a gloss, I'm sorry, a semi-gloss and a matte. So the customer will clean the floor, all right, just like they would clean a wall before they paint it, uh, scrub it down, get rid of any dirt and grime that's there. Then they go ahead and, you know, tape off uh, the baseboards, um, cut in along the edges like you would cut in a wall, and then go ahead and roll this product out. Um, it self-levels, it fills in all of the uh, grout lines, um, any, you know, seams or, or joints between hardwood floors. It is meant to coat everything. And as you can see in some of these pictures, people will actually take two different colors and stencil. So they'll put down a, a, a solid color and then create a stencil over that and put on a different color to create their own unique floor pattern and, and, and their own flooring. Once that's dry after six hours, the clear coat goes on top of it. Um, that clear coat needs a 24 hour cure before you can start walking across it and putting um, you know, kitchen tables and whatever else back on it. Um, I would strongly recommend that if you're doing it in like a mud room or something and you happen to have a washer and dryer, um, the washer and dryer should not be pushed or slid across the floor even after it's done and cured. Um, I would pick up and set 
the washer and dryer or something heavy like that into position rather than push it into position. Um, but with the clear coat, it is going to handle, uh, you know, normal foot traffic, the, the, the normal uh, back and forth of tables and chairs, um, all that kind of stuff and hold up really nicely. It is not slippery once it's done. Um, I've had this question a lot about um, putting it in a bathroom, uh, for example. And what I say to everybody is that a bathroom floor is no, whether it's painted or it's a, a tile floor, this with this paint on it, it's no more slippery than if it was with the, the ceramic tile being down, right? That the floor is not the problem. It's the water that gets on the floor, maybe from the shower or whatever, that would cause a slippery situation. So if you get water on it, you just mop it up like you would normally do with a regular floor. Cleaning uh, maintenance is really simple. It can be just kind of like, you know, Swiffer uh, dust mopped um, and uh, maintenance is very, very simple. We have a lot of things, uh, a lot of content, I should call it, out there about this. This has been a, a huge, huge product launch for us. Um, the, the color visualizer tool on rustoleum.com is fantastic. Really gives you options to kind of play with what the floor is going to look like. Um, the how-to videos are very simple. Um, it, it is really, really easy project. I mean, it is literally painting just like a like a wall uh, project. Um, color product is obviously or color palette is obviously online as well, and a whole lot of social media uh, pictures like galleries and stuff like that. Um, here's the SKUs that I mentioned. Um, you know, the, the gallons uh, are in the warehouse as well. <clears throat> um, not part of the planogram that Ace uh, put out there. Um, the quartz come in with the planogram, so we have both options. Um, so you can bring in whatever you need there. Um, and I think we basically covered every all of this already. Like I said, six hours to cure. Uh, oh, rollers. Um, really, you know, using your standard rollers. You can see right here, three-A snap roller to apply the paint, uh, quarter-inch snap roller to apply the top coat. Um, the really, really nice thing about this stuff is that it is all latex-based. It's water-based product, so there's no odor. Uh, so doing this in a confined space is not going to be a problem. Um, you're not going to have this, you know, you know, high odor, high smell that's going to get you, you know, high or get a, create a headache or anything like that. It's it's virtually odorless uh, and very easy to clean up because it is, you know, soap and water cleanup. All right, there's the entire line. Um, there are the kits in the middle. Um, the kits are the quart sizes, and it's a mix and match between the, the uh, base coats and the top coats. Um, Ace is not stocking those, uh, just FYI. Um, so <clears throat> you can see the retail, um, you know, gallons around 50 bucks or so. So if you do the math, uh, around $100 for two gallons because you need a uh, base coat and a top coat. Um, $100 for 400 square feet. You start, you know, pricing that out versus replacing flooring, uh, replacing tile, you know, uh, or hardwood. This is far cheaper, much, much uh, more in a budget, so to speak, um, for your consumer, for your customer. Okay. So the advantage here is, is not only is it less expensive, uh, but we're talking about a project that the homeowner can do themselves. So there's no need to have a contractor come in and, and do the work, which is kind of a big deal right now, right? Less people in our houses is, is a good thing. Um, and then it's also no mess, all right? There's no ripping out of old flooring. Um, you don't need to rent a dumpster to throw all the old tile and hardwood floor in. Uh, there's no underlayment to buy. It's much, much cheaper and much faster. It's a very, very simple, easy project for your customer to handle. All right, moving on. Uh, Zinser primers. Um, just kind of wanted to touch base on, on primers like I usually do, um, simply because I get this all the time about kills. Um, and I'm not gonna, you know, bash my competitor or anything like that. I just want to make something very clear. Um, Kills is a name brand. Kills implies that it does something special, but the truth is, Kills is not killing anything. It does not kill mold or odors or stains or anything. It is simply a name brand. Where this really comes into play is in regards to our mold killing primer. Now, the Zinzer mold killing primer, in order to put killing on that name on that label, we had to prove that this primer actually did what we're claiming. So we had to have this tested by the EPA. So it's a fully registered product with the EPA that truly does kill actively growing mold in the drywall. All right. Kills Mold and Mildew 
is a mold, if you see it's highlighted there, mold and mildew resistant primer. All right, that actually is on the same level as our perma white paints. All right, our perma white paints, which is our top coat paints, they're not a, a primer, um, are mold and mildew resistant. Mold killing primer actually kills actively growing mold in the drywall. All right, so where this applies, obvious, obvious places would be a bathroom where maybe we don't have ventilation. My, my house in particular, I have two bathrooms upstairs. It's an older home. Neither one has fans. Um, you know, I have two teenage boys who are constantly taking hot, long showers and uh, there's mold in there. So I hit it with this stuff, uh, killed the mold that was there and then top coated it with our perma white paint and no mold is ever coming back ever again in those, in those places. All right. Um, so the, the mold killing primer it has been in your stores as quarts and gallons for a little while now. Uh, we just recently, this past year, launched this guy, mold blocking primer in the aerosol form. Uh, there's your SKU number. Ace decided to put it in department seven instead of department one. I don't know why. I can't control that. It's just what they did. Um, and I'm sure you're probably questioning, Greg, why does this say mold blocking when the last one said mold killing? Well, in order to get this product out quickly and onto shelves, we had to call it mold blocking while the EPA is testing this to be able to uh, verify our claim of it killing mold. So again, this is in the hands of the EPA right now. They are testing it, trying to prove that our claim of killing mold is, is true. Um, it is, it will happen. Uh, at some point, this product will get a new label and it'll be called mold killing primer as well. Um, but ACE did add it. It is something to uh, consider bringing in out of the warehouse, you know, case pack of six, put it with your other aerosol primers um, and you have a nice convenient, you know, quick spray. This is perfect for, um, uh, you know, quick little spots, maybe under sinks where you've had some leakage happening and there's some mold growing, um, you know, great for plumbers to have in their, uh, you know, in their truck, in their bag uh, to bring with them on jobs like that. Um, or just hard to reach places because God knows water gets wherever the heck it wants to go. And the aerosol can is just great for being able to quickly hit a small area that has some water damage. You don't want mold to grow or mold is growing and you want to kill it. This is perfect for that. All right, moving on. Chalk paints. Um, I bring this up because um, chalk paints has been on fire. We are selling an enormous amount of this product and you guys are too. And I actually believe a few stores are kind of light on inventory because we have had some serious uh, issues getting uh, this product made um, and enough out into the world because it, the demand has been insane. Um, but just know that this stuff is all in the warehouse. Okay. Um, if you do not have it, um, and you're, you've been burned by Amy Howard or, or, you know, have a bad taste in your mouth about chalk paint. Um, trust me when I tell you this stuff will sell. It is great to have, um, the customers love it. It's a very, uh, cost efficient. Um, it's 20 bucks a quart. Uh, the aerosols I think are around eight or $9. Um, they are convenient grab and go, uh, pre-mixed colors, but we also have just a couple bases to mix colors. And to make a big announcement here, we just launched, and if you want one of these, let me know. I will order it for you. Um, we just launched the fact that we are able to color match into our chalked paints now. So uh, I know that was one thing we um, kind of fell short on initially uh, with Amy Howard. You know, she had the availability of, of color matching. Um, it was a long process, but we finally got there. Uh, so now if a customer grabs a Benmore paint chip or a Clark and Kensington paint chip and says, I want this mixed into chalk paint, you can do it. All right. The only thing you have to do is make sure you have the most current paint software on your paint computer and you guys can do it. All right. And these little shelf danglers are a great way to tell your customer that and it, it will fit really nicely by the, um, by the chalk paints. All right. So that's it for chalk paint. Uh, painter's touch. All right. Obviously this guy here is our, um, top dog these days, uh, selling more spray paint than ever before. Um, spray paint sales are just unbelievably through the roof and continue to be even in months like now, when we don't typically sell much spray paint, people are still spray painting. 
Um, and, um, you know, every year we do this color watch. Um, so this year uh, we have some new uh, color watch colors for 2021. Um, paprika is the color of the year. Um, I don't know who picks these. I don't know why they pick them. They just do. I think they're just tr trying to highlight different colors. Um, I know there are some trends and, and we do have some people in our marketing department who follow those trends and they kind of try to, uh, you know, check out what other interior designers are doing and other D, uh, D, like the DIY network kind of people. Uh, we have uh, influencers and bloggers and all these other folks on online who are, are uh, they create trends themselves by creating different colors and using different colors in home decor. And so we try to follow that and come up with these colors to, to be the colors of the year um, or on the color watch program. So that's why they're there. Um, but I would strongly recommend if you can take a snapshot or write down, if you see that link that's down there, the rustoleum.com slash pages slash color watch 2021. Um, it's just a great resource kind of shows you what colors are hot. Um, you know, Sometimes customers are, are asking questions about color, um, and, you know, and they might be deciding between two or three different, you know, shades of a gray or a blue. Well, if you look on here and you know which colors are, are trending right now and, and what's what's kind of hot and, and really um, on trend, you know, you sound relevant to your customer. Um, they appreciate the input. Uh, they like to know those kinds of things. They like to know what's what's trending. You know, what is Joanna Gaines using this year? You know, here's the color that she uses the most, or whoever these other bloggers are that are are online and, and uh, content providers. Um, lots of cool stuff on there. There's some really neat videos too to watch. So just something to you know pull up on your phone if you want to and check out. All right. Um, so a couple uh, new colors available to you guys too. Um, every year we launch new colors. The 2X line is not getting smaller, <laughs> it's getting bigger. We have more and more colors. Um, in, the last, uh, in the last year or two, we, we expanded the 2X line, not just by color, but by sheen. We added in these, uh, these high gloss SKUs, and then um, you'll see in the next slide, the ultra matte SKUs. You probably have a couple of these already, um, especially in the black and white. And then I think there's a couple of grays um, in the ultra matte that, that were that actually made the, the new ACE planogram. Um, but these high gloss SKUs, there's, there's more available in the warehouse than just the black and white. And this is a big trend. People are starting to go really vibrant with color. All right. Um, not necessarily as, you know, a full um, um, centerpiece, but more as an accent. So bright colors are kind of coming back again, all right? For a long time, we were gray and muted colors and really soft um, kind of uh, uh, feel to the colors, but now we're, we're seeing a swing back to some really vibrant, bright colors. And that's what this high gloss line is. Uh, you can kind of see the color swatch there, uh, of some of the colors, that's not even all of them, to be honest with you. Um, but they are available. So just know uh, you can look them up uh, in ACENET or if you need help, you can contact me and I can give you the SKUs. Uh, right, here are the ultra matte ones. Um, the, the muted SKUs, the, the really neutral tones are still extremely popular. Um, this is more of your focal point kind of color. The, the, a lot of folks are still doing these very soft muted colors um, for like, centerpiece kind of things or, or or true even like you know whole walls or whole rooms and, and houses not that you'd spray paint a whole wall but you get what i'm saying um so these colors are are really 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 good sellers very trendy right now um and uh, definitely something that to consider adding in um and there's room i've i've placed these uh, both the ultra matte and the high gloss in in all stores or not all stores many stores sorry and uh, there's room to move some things around in your planogram and if you need help with that that's something you can contact me about all right uh, moving on oh here's the 2021 brand new colors these are available now all right available from us not necessarily with ace ace has not necessarily added these yet um and i do say yet i, I don't know where that's at they may uh they may be adding them i'm not sure but like i said every year uh there's always a couple you know two to five or six colors that get added and this is this year's offering so uh another green another lavender the peach i like it's actually a pretty nice color and the burnt sienna um those those um that's the ultra matte finish that, that again that's one of those muted tones 
not a bright, you know, blow up, you know, blow up kind of orange. It's really muted and, and it's quite a nice color. Um, and lavenders, those gray, those gray purples are just, they've been on fire. They're huge, huge skews. So good items to add if you want them. All right. Um, painter's touch. All right. So go back just real quick. One slide. Um, in case you don't see it, it's kind of hard to see, but under the Rust-Oleum and, and above the 2X on the can, it says painter's touch. All right. For those of you who don't know. Hey, Greg. Uh, yeah. Greg, really quick. Sorry. Can you go to where it says slideshow on your screen? Slideshow. Next animations on the top. Home insert design transactions animation slideshow. Yeah. Click that and right. then click from current slide or Kylie, which because it's not, it's too little for everyone to see it. Okay. Click on that and see if it makes it the whole screen. There you that go. Yep, that, right. then everybody can see the things you're trying uh, to talk about. Right. And just for the record, I had to ask my daughter. <laughs> I probably knew it was there. I just, I thought everybody could see it better than I, you know. Yeah, it's just when you were, when you were getting like to the small links and things, it was a little bit harder. So I thought I'd help it out. All right. Good deal. Thank you. Um, all right. So anyways, like I said, painter's touch, um, 2X is actually called painter's touch 2X, right? So then these painter's touch skews here in the quartz um, and half pints um, are painter's touch, right? So it's the same brand. It's just in a brush good in a, in a, in a, quart and a half pint instead of in an aerosol. These are latex paints, all right? For those of you who don't have these or know about them, it's not the traditional Rust-Oleum oil-based paints, right? That's what most people think of Rust-Oleum as is oil-based paints. Um, truth is, this is a latex paint. And I know a lot of stores have these already. You guys sell a ton of them. They're great SKUs. Um, they're a direct competition to your Clark and his Clark and Kensington high gloss enamels, um, but with a, a label that is attractive, a brand that customers recognize, um, and a price point that's phenomenal. All right, the quartz will sell around 12 bucks. Your half pints are like five or six. Um, if this is not something you have in the store, please consider bringing them in. Uh, I can you know, help you with it. Um, they are part of Discovery, so you can always order it through Ace as a Discovery order. Um, and every place they get put they sell all right it's just they're they're very convenient pre-mixed colors no mixing involved um and the colors match the the 2x aerosols right so that gloss apple red you see in the half pint there is the same as the gloss apple red in the 2x all right um and in the blacks and whites we have you know four different sheens from flat all the way up to gloss um there's a few other satins involved with some of the browns and i think there's a um a red or two in there, but lots of lots of options here for for colors and different things for your customer. All right, the only thing about this Deanna is now I don't know what next what the slide is next. I gotta I'll be surprised just like you. Oh, I'm done. Look at that. I'm done early. Um, so this is my contact information. Um, the um, you know I will I will take emails. I will take phone calls. I will take text messages. Whatever you guys need from me. Uh, I'm good with, uh, you know, talking about anything. If you have a problem or a question with a customer that's right there in front of you at the store, um, please feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to answer anything I can. So with that, we can kind of open it up. Uh, if there's any questions about um, anything I did cover or anything I did not cover, because I know there's a lot of I have current questions for you, Greg, that I will read off. And if anybody thinks some more, they can put them in the chat as you're answering and I'll go off them. Yep. First one is, and if the, if you don't understand it, the person that put it can chime in. Um, used shower wall tile with a question mark. Does that make sense to you from... I'm uh, not sure. If the person that asked that question wants to elaborate, they can put in the chat and I'll move on to the next one. Well, I'll, I'll start. I'll start with this. I have a feeling they're asking about the Rustoleum home. Yes. Um, okay. And um, I would say, as far as putting the RO home in a uh, shower, all right, where there's water involved, not something we're marketing, not something we really are doing. Um, but I will say this about RO home. I will say that. 
I actually used it not only in my bathroom and on, on the floor, but I also had some left over and I painted my, my front porch concrete stoop. So it is outside um, in the elements, all right? In the cold, in the snow, in the rain, in the sun, everything. And I put it down last spring um, and it's been fine. Um, it's been a little slippery with the snow on it here lately, to be honest with you. Um, but any painted surface outside with snow on top of it is gonna be slippery anyways. So that being said, um, while we are not necessarily recommending it for a bathroom tile, uh, I'm sorry, a shower tile, um, it could be done, all right? I would suggest adding another step to it. So after we clean, I would prime first, just to add adhesion because the problem with a shower is not just the moisture, but the humidity. All right, so it gets pretty warm in there and, and a, lot of, uh, a lot of moisture uh, is created and sticks around. It, it stays moist in, in a shower, it stays humid in a shower or in a bathroom. Um, so I would prime it first and depending on the tile, it, actually it really doesn't depend on the tile, whatever tile's up there, I, I would prime it with bullseye 123 first. Um, either that or some of the stores are starting to bring in a new primer that Ace added it's called Smart Prime from us. Um, so either one would work really well on tile, um, to be a primer first, then I would put the base coat on it. Then I would put the top coat on top of that. So, uh, probably another, you know, four hour dry time from primer to, to the first coat of paint, six hours for that to dry. And then 20, I would wait at least a day, if not maybe two days to let the top coat thoroughly dry and cure before I would take a shower in there again. Great. The next question, Greg, is, is chalk paint the same as chalkboard paint? And no. how are the differences? No, nothing is the same there. Um, I get that question a lot too. So thank you for asking it. Um, chalkboard paint is a paint that once dry can be written on with chalk. Okay. So it's Think about when, well, I don't know how old this person is, but um, when I was a kid, uh, teachers actually used chalkboards and chalk in class. And, you know, we got to go knock out the erasers and breathe in all that lovely chalk dust. And that was always fun as a kid. But we don't do that these days. My wife's a teacher and she doesn't use a chalkboard anymore. Um, so chalkboard paint and chalked paint are completely different. All right. The application is, is different. Um and how they hold up is different. So chalkboard paint, specific use, it's really meant to create a chalkboard um, on a wall, all right? So uh, it's kind of trendy, it's a big thing. If you look it up on Pinterest right now, people do it all over their homes so that they can kind of write reminders or special little notes to their kids. I, I know a friend here in my neighborhood that um, did their entire um, door to the basement it's in their kitchen so they use it as like a menu and like grocery lists and whatever they just write all over it with chalk every day um and then chalk chalked paint itself is really meant for uh furniture okay so wood primarily um to take a uh an old desk an old uh you know, let's say China cabinet or curio cabinet or whatever you want to call it and bring it back to life. All right. Um, instead of it, it's basically chalk paint is an alternative to stripping the, the, the wood stain out of it and restaining it and recoating it because chalked paint can be put directly onto a piece of furniture that's already stained and already top coated with polyurethane with nothing more than cleaning it. You don't have to strip it. You don't have to sand it. You don't have to degloss it. Um, so then you paint the chalked paint on it, let that dry. And then that has to be clear coated. There's a matte finish clear coat. Um, go back and see if I had it in the picture. Uh, the aerosol is there. So if you see the on the top row, the aerosol all the way to the right, that matte clear coat, but you do have a clear coat in the, in the brush good as well. So um, it has to be top coated. Um, because otherwise chalked paint will chalk. Chalk is a term for paint that when you brush up against it, it actually comes off onto your hand, onto your clothes, whatever. So um, two completely different applications. Chalk board is a specific thing that you're gonna put on a wall to, to be able to write on it with chalk. And then chalked paint is for furniture um, to kind of bring it back to life and change the look of it. 
Awesome. Greg, just a couple comments about chalk paint that were made so you know, and in case anyone else didn't read them, someone said color matching chalk paint is a game changer. And you can do your end cap signage with chalkboard paint if you have an artist type within your store. So. I, I've seen that in a few stores. Um, a couple of them aren't A stores, but there's a couple throughout Chicago that have actually done that. They've, they'll take their um, they'll take their end cap sign and chalkboard paint it and then they can write up whatever it is for the season or for the special and you know, whatever's on sale and then easily just wipe that off and change it for the next month or next week or whatever it is. It's it actually, it really, it looks cool. It really helps kind of individualize and, and unique, uh, make that store unique to itself because it doesn't look like every other store you walk into. So it's a pretty cool little thing if you can do it. Awesome. The next question is, how can we get those color brochures? And if you are sending them out, Mokina needs some. <laughs> oh, I love the Whitmores. Gotta love them. Ah, I'll send them to you, Lisa. Don't worry about it. Um, but, how, but Lisa didn't actually ask the initial question. So if somebody wants to get color brochures, do they need to contact you? What do they need to go about to do? Call or email me. Okay, so do you, Greg, want to put your email in the chat or give it to me and I can put it in the chat for them? Oh, it's right there. There you go. If anybody, so if anybody needs it, they can write down this email and either give it, if you're not a manager and you need to give it to your manager to get a hold of him. Um, last but not least, are there display boards available for 2X spray paint to help the customers select color? Um, whoever asked that question, can you expound upon it or expand upon it? I have hanging color charts and I have, um, like leaflets kind of like threefold or fourfold, you know, leaflets that a customer would take with them. Um, but as far as a big board, I don't have anything that's real big. We're trying to not be too intrusive and make it take up all your shelf space. So if you um, need that, that's something I can order as well. All, unfortunately, all of our POP comes from me. So if you ever need any of that stuff, please, whether it's, uh, you know, I didn't even touch base or touch on Verithane stains. Any of that stuff is mine. I'm not Minwax. That gets, I get that question all the time. Uh, Minwax is Sherwin-Williams. But if it's Verithane stains, Zinsser primers, any of the rust spray paints or, or paints, um, the cleaners that we talked about, um, just to name a few testers, um, you know, any of that stuff you need POP, it's, it's from me directly. Um, she just said she was looking for some visuals so customers know what the spray paint color is. Well, that's why the lid is the color it is on the can, honestly. Um, that's, you know, we, we've tried to make that simple, but yet customers still get confused and I don't understand it. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but it's very clear that the color of the can, the lid uh, or cap is the color of the paint it, to a T. It matches exactly. Um, Greg, you mentioned testers. What are these for? What are these for? These testers? Testers is a brand. Uh, it's Craft and Hobby Paints. Um, been around a long time. We bought them, I don't know, several years back. Um, you have some SKUs in the store. Uh, one of these days, we're hoping to expand uh, into a much bigger Craft and Hobby set. Um, it was all set to go about 15 months ago, honestly, and all hell broke loose, and it hasn't happened. Um, and not to get into too much detail, but with all the, all the problems we're having, getting enough cans even to make our spray paint, we're not focusing on testers right now. We're not trying to shove more product into ACE. It, we're trying to maintain and, and just get our heads above water. Actually, actually, Greg, she said they're back in stock, so you're good. Some of them are. Uh, I, and, and, you know, that's probably the, the one thing I want to just let you guys all know is that we are, we are running short on inventory and, and, you know, some colors, especially in the spray paint might not be in stock all the time. Um, just be patient. We're trying, we're, we're making more paint than we've ever made before and we can't keep up with demand. So it's crazy out there right now.
Awesome. Thank you, Adam. Um, everyone, welcome to the training. Um, you know, there's a lot to kind of go over. Uh, we're going through three different manufacturers today, so there's a lot to cover. So I suggest taking notes. Um, and uh, if you have any questions uh, in the future, after we go through the, the Q&A at the end, uh, my uh, cell phone number is on this slide as well as my email. Um, it is always best to probably text first, call second, and email third uh, in today's climate. So uh, my email gets pretty clogged and uh, it, sometimes it takes me a few days to get back. But um, so text, call, email. Um, with that being said, let's kind of get into everything. Um, what we're going to cover today is uh, the three manufacturers. Like I said, the first one's going to be Magnolia. Uh, we're only going to focus on the interior paint today uh, because, again, a lot to cover, a lot of slides to go through. Then we're going to get into the, eight, the new Ace branded paint applicators um, by Linzer. Uh, there's a lot of changes there and a lot of things that kind of need to be understood. Um, so we know what we're selling. And then we're going to get into some of the SureTech uh, painters tapes. Um, uh, with that being said, uh, before we move into anything, everyone who has Magnolia should have this website uh, saved as a favorite, either on their paint counter or on their um, on any training computers within the store. Um, it is very easy. You know, just go type in this website that is highlighted at the bottom uh, and it'll bring you to a home page. Don't need to do that. Um, and that homepage uh, will give you all these different options. Now in here, there's a lot of stuff to cover. You have uh, tips and tricks videos from Joanna, which you probably have seen um, kind of play in your store uh, through since you've had it. Um, there's also some selling primers, exploring primers, um, then the paint training, a lot of what we're gonna cover today, it is in a written format under Magnolia Paint Trading. And then marketing assets, if you do anything for your store via social media or anything like that, all the approved pictures and marketing assets that you can use are actually under that marketing assets tab. Um, and then right below that is the document library. Now there's three documents in there. And um, the one you really just need to be concerned with is the first document. And that document is actually um, where you're gonna order any of your chips, uh, the color chips or inspirational guides and things like that. Um, there is a electronic version or you can print it out uh, and make a master copy for yourself and you can either email it or fax it try to make it very easy there is a, a magnolia store locator on there as well you know in an instance maybe you know you have a really busy saturday you run out of base uh, a base and you can find a closest store to you maybe you can do a trade with or something um, but that's typically left up to the managers right so uh but the big one too is the webinar so anything i don't cover today like maybe you know we have this huge expanded program so like chalk paints and different things like that um, you can go into this webinar tab and there's three different uh, videos in there that you can kind of watch on your free time. Uh, they're very short videos, 10 to 15 minutes, and um, maybe pick up some things uh, along the way. Or if you forget something, it's a good reference tool to kind of go back and uh, kind of keep yourself uh, up to date uh, with the program. So moving on, uh, what are the keys to selling, right? Um, you know, the biggest one is going to be confidence. Like it, we have to have confidence in a product in order to sell it. We got to be confident that it's going to work for the consumer, um, you know, that it's going to work for the store and everyone involved and that the product is actually going to uh, perform. Um, you know, we don't want to be selling products to our customers and it's not going to perform, right? So we got to be confident in the product that we're trying to um, put into the customer's hands um, in order for in order for us to be successful selling that product. Well, in order to gain that confidence, we basically need the knowledge of that, of that product, how it works, why it works, what makes that product work. And that's really my goal today is to kind of make us understand, uh, give you the knowledge so you can build that confidence in these products and pass it on to the consumer, all right? Um, so that leaves us with, you know, what is in a gallon of paint before we can under just sell the paint we got to kind of understand what's actually in the paint um in in order to sell it and it, basically a paint can there's two things liquids and solids now there's a bunch of different things within those two main 
characteristics that make up what's in a gallon of paint. So first you have your liquids. It's typically nowadays going to be a latex paint, which is going to be water. Uh, in some instances, you will still have some oil, uh, but that's typically the liquid in a gallon of paint. Uh, then you have your additives, you have your pigments, and you have your binders, right? Well, that's all great and good, but what does that actually mean? And we will get, and that's what I want to break down because I think that's what we need to understand um, some of those things, uh, which is going to differentiate a, um, a low quality paint versus a high quality paint. And as you can see from the picture here, um, you know, typically in your lower quality paints, you're going to have a lot more water, a lot less of the solids versus a high quality paint. You're going to have a lot more of the solids and, um, you know, a lot less of the liquid. So um, you need that liquid in there because that is actually what is going to help, you know, spread those solids out onto the wall but after that point um we don't really uh you know you don't need the water so we need something that evaporates and typically water based especially for wall wall paints uh performs better because it dries quicker in today's environment and people nowadays like speed right so um to kind of get into some of these aspects of what's in there, first I want to cover pigments. And this is pretty easy. The industry standard nowadays is TiO2 or titanium dioxide. This is actually what replaced lead in paints. You know, lead obviously not good for us. Um, so, you know, they had to find a, a different metal alternative uh, and that was titanium. And once it's refined and broken down, then we get titanium dioxide. Now you see the price per pound there. That's not exact or, or true to what the market is, but I wanted to kind of give you guys an idea of the different quality levels of different pigments that you can find in some of your paints, especially within your store. Um, TiO2 is actually considered the best white pigment available on the market. Um, there is no argument with that among, um, you know, any of the major paint companies. Like it's, you know, in all the premium paints, you're using TiO2. Now keep in mind, TiO2 can vary um, on its quality level as well, depending on where you're getting it from, how it's refined and all that type of stuff as well. So, um, but the TiO2 is what's gonna give you the best hide and best dur durability to the paint film uh, on the market right now. Some other pigments that you'll find in like contractor grade paints and uh, some lower quality paints um, is uh, there's really two main ones. Uh, there's a few others, but there's two main ones and that's calcium carbonate, which is basically ground up limestone. And that's typically a tan color. And when you use that, you know, you're typically using more colorant for uh, to mix the paint. Um, even though it is cheaper per pound, right? And, and that's kind of one of the lowest grade ones you'll find in most of the common paints. The other one is clay, which is more of a gray color. And the same thing, you're, you're um, kind of making up for that grayish color uh, when you tint it um, in your store. So you're, again, you're using more tint, but you can see kind of what the price points are there as well. So if you're using calcium carbonate, yes, it's very cheap, very inexpensive, and the same with clay, and then we get the titanium dioxide. And um, all your premium paints are using the highest grade titanium di dioxide. And Masterchem, who who owns Kills and Bear and Magnolia, um, they use some of the best in the industry. So um, we are known for our, having the widest bases in the paint industry, um, and it's uh, really not uh, debatable at this point. Um, and that's kind of been. Been, been a standard for about uh, the last five to seven years um, when you look at that. Some other things that are very important in there is obviously the glue, which is the latex binders. Um, and there's three that you'll find in, in your paints typically. Um, the first one is a very low end glue and that's just vinyl. This again, it's low in cost. Um, it's very, you know, so it's very inexpensive inexpensive and you will find this mostly again in these contractor grade paints and these very low price point paints right um, on the other side of that spectrum is 100 percent acrylic um, it's a very high quality glue uh, it'll stick to almost anything the downside to 100 percent acrylic paints is acrylic is very expensive right and then you have a mix of the two in this you'll find typically in your medium uh, price point paints, um, and it's a mix of vinyl and acrylic. The only issue with that 
um, from a selling standpoint is we typically don't know how much vinyl to acrylic or acrylic to vinyl is in paints. A good way to kind of judge that is kind of look at the price point. So if a gallon of paint is at the low end of that mid price point range, we probably have more vinyl than acrylic. Um, and if it's on the higher end of that mid price point range, we probably have more acrylic than vinyl right? Um, Magnolia is 100% acrylic. Um, so it has that high quality glues. We actually use the same acrylic glue in our paint as we do like in Kills 3, um, which is a premium primer. If you take Kills 3 and put it on a piece of wood and stick that wood to another piece of wood, you're not going to be able to um, pull that apart. It's a very strong glue, similar to like your Gorilla Glues and, and Loctites, right? So um just keep that in mind. So the glue is actually what is, uh, you know, making the paint stick to the wall. And, um, you know, there is a very good video. Um, for some reason, I could not share it on a slide. So that website I shared with you, make sure you go on there, you look up the video uh, and write this down, look up the video resin test by uh, that Joanna does, and you'll see the difference in a vinyl uh, glue versus a hundred percent acrylic glue in that video um it's also could be referred to as the balloon test so uh, make sure you look at that video uh it is very telling and you know uh it's very impactful uh so that covers the pigments and the binders well and then there, we have additives right so we can put these glues we can put these pigments in there with the liquid the water and then, you know, what happens, right? So that's, you know, there's other steps that need to be taken. So we have all these different additives and these are pretty much the industry norm when you look at paints. And these are things we have to put in there, right? So we have this coalescent aid um, that, uh, you know, kind of helps the film formation. You have defoamer, which is actually really important uh, because this prevents bubbles from forming. Uh, you know, when you're putting this thing in a shaker and you take it out. Now, you still have a little bit of bubbles, but if you didn't have this defomer in there, I mean, it'd be like putting an overload of soap into your uh, washing machine, right? You'd have bubbles just popping out of the can. So this defomer is very important. Uh, the dispersant obviously, you know, helps the paint disperse evenly. Uh, the ICI driver is actually what helps you control paint with the applicators and, and during the application process. Um, and some of these other ones. Uh, the other big one is the thickener. Um, and th that typically gives paint body. And the reason paint companies put that in there is um, for a few reasons. But one of the main reasons is, you know, you typically get about three, 300 to 400 square feet out of a gallon of paint, um, depending on the substrate you're putting it on, right? Uh, the, what the thickener does is it ensures that the customer um, is not overextending the paint too much, right? Uh, because if we overextend the paint on the wall and we're getting 600 square feet out of a 300 square foot gallon of paint, that's not good. The paint's not gonna perform well. Um, you know, there, it's gonna have all kinds of issues. So they actually put the thickener in there to help control the consumer and the way they paint. Um, so, you know, really what's going to separate Magnolia from other paints, uh, especially in its price point, right? So uh, another is, and it basically breaks down to mildew resistance uh, or mildew resistance additives, right? So that's, uh, the first one is an industry standard. Everyone puts it in there. If you have a closed gallon, everyone's using this preservative um, to put it in there because what that is going to do is prevent any mold or mildew growth inside the can while it's on the shelf. I mean, if you... Imagine being inside a paint can, right? It is the darkest, wettest place. Like it is a perfect feeding ground for mold and mildew. So we have to put that preservative in there um, to, you know, keep the paint good so it doesn't go bad on the shelf. The second one, not everyone uses. And you're typically going to only find this in your very high quality paints. Like or Bath and Spa um, has this mildew side in there. Um, and, you know, obviously that is like a $70 gallon of paint. So your very high quality expensive paints put this mildicide in there. Well, we also put this mildicide in Magnolia, but um, we're able to do it at that $45 price point. And what this does is 
is going to prevent any, it's not going to provide a feeding ground for mold or mildew uh, on the paint film after it's been on a wall and it's been dried. So um, that is one of the biggest factors in Magnolia that, that some of the other paints in its price point don't have. Um, so kind of keep that in mind, you know, and that can just give you the confidence knowing that, you know, especially in a laundry room, a bathroom, even a kitchen, anywhere where it's going to be dark or damp or uh, there's a lot of moisture, um, you know, Magnolia is going to be a great option for those consumers. Uh, some other things that we do in our paint and a lot of companies do um, is all the stain blocking and stain resistance. Um, there's typically a lot of confusion between the two, but they're actually uh, very different in what they do. So stain blocking is when uh, the paint actually has the ability to block any existing stains that are on the wall, grease stains, water stains, crayon, right? If you got kids um, from bleeding through the uh, paint that you're applying onto the wall. So it's going to prevent um, any stains from showing through uh, your finished product when you're painting the wall. And that is typically a, a feature that's found in most primers, um, you know, kills. And I know Zinsser has that too as well. But um, so stain blocking is something you typically find in, in primers, um, which is another added benefit to having a paint and primer and paint because a lot of those new paint and primers now have that stain blocking capability. Um, and then the stain resistance. So stain resistance is actually, you know, you already painted the wall, right? Um, this just actually happened to me in my kitchen uh, a week ago, two weeks ago. Um, my daughter, just, we were eating hot dogs and my daughter decided to play around with ketchup and actually squirt ketchup on the wall. Um, not her finest moment, but uh, it was pretty funny uh, the way it happened. But if you didn't have that stain resistance in the paint, then taking that ketchup off the wall, even though it was fresh, could still leave a stain, right? Um, and, and getting that off, and once you start trying to remove that stain, it's going to take a lot of elbow grease and maybe some cleaners you don't want to use on your paint. And it's going to start removing the film off the wall. So um, the stain resistance and the stain blocking are two different things, and they both play a huge role uh, into the paint. And obviously, we have those features in our paint. So, um, you know, when you're cleaning your painted walls, you don't want to be removing the paint. And again, I'm going to refer you back to that website and look at the video called Scrub Test as well. And that will basically give you an idea of what we, uh, you know, what the capabilities are with Magnolia. So versus some of the other paints. Now, with all that being said, now you have some knowledge of what's in the paint can, um, you know, what makes Magnolia a, a premium paint, um, you know, how do you sell it? And, and the first key is basically you assume the sale. And this doesn't just go for Magnolia. You know, you should apply this with Ben Moore, with Clark and Kensington uh, and Magnolia all in one. Any of the paints you carry in your paint department, assume the sale. If the customer takes a color chip off of the color rack, whether it be Ben Moore, Magnolia or Clark, and they say, I want this color in a gallon of paint. Great, assume that's the paint they want, you know, um, don't just, let's not ask the question, well, what brand do you want? Well, you pulled Magnolia, so let's assume they want Magnolia, right? Let the customer ask you uh, what paints are available to them in the paint department. Don't just kind of offer that up. Just kind of assume they want Magnolia, right? Um, now you will have those instances and we don't want to lose any sales, um, right? Don't just be like, well, we only mix Magnolia colors and Magnolia. You know, when they ask you which paints are available, let them know and then explain to them if you color match this company's color into a different paint brand, um, we cannot guarantee the color. No matter how good your tint system is or your color matching system is, it's never going to be 100% spot on. And you just explain that to the customer. And if they're comfortable with that, then go ahead and, you know, sell it to them. Because what that does is it takes all the liability off the stores, off of you uh, and the store, and it's going to cut down on your mist tints in the future. I, I've heard so many stories where people are like, well, yeah, I took this color and I put it in here and then they took it home, they put it on the wall and it didn't match and they were unhappy and they 
brought the can back in and they wanted us to replace it or fix the color, right? Um, and then you now you got this huge little area in your paint department with all these missing cans that we got to mark down and it's just no good for anybody, right? So um, make sure we're explaining that the color matching system is never 100% spot on. Um, and this is the, the biggest factor in selling Magnolia because people are going to fall in love with the colors. If you've had Magnolia in your store for a while, you know that people love the colors. It's the paint. It's a new paint company. So we got to build that confidence in the consumer that, yes, this is a premium paint and this is going to work for you. Um, this is not some off the wall paint. This is a premium paint by a, a major player in, in the paint industry. Right. So, um, so after we've done all that, right, and we are putting the customer, we know the customer wants that gallon of paint from the color they've chosen, now we need to qualify the customer. So what I mean by that is, you know, instead of asking them, what sheen do you want this in? Well, you know, most people coming in our stores, nine times out of 10 are probably a DIY, right? And they may not be familiar with all the different sheens. How many times have you asked the customer, what sheen do you want? And they say, well, what sheens are there and uh, all that. So why don't we just cut down that conversation and, and get right to the point. And instead of asking them what sheen they want, let's ask them what room they're painting. So, cause based on that information they give us, we can then recommend the sheen that they need. So if we're doing a bedroom, for instance, you know, oh, you're doing your master bedroom. Okay, great. I typically will recommend anywhere from a mat to an eggshell finish or bedroom, just because, you know, when that sun rises in the morning, you don't want to peeking through the blinds and hitting some shiny spot on the wall and, and waking you up before you want to wake up, right? Uh, if it's a hallway, right, or a high traffic area, we want to recommend a set and finish because the higher the sheen, the easier it is to clean, right? So based on the information they give us by asking that question alone, we know which sheen we should recommend and give them a few different options like a mat, a flat or an eggshell and then let them choose, right? Um, and then the next big one is we need to know how much paint they need to actually finish a job. Um, so we asked them, how big is a room? And we know typically, you know, if we use that 300 square foot mark on a gallon of paint, we can make a, a gallon recommendation based on the size of the room. So for instance, if it's a 10 by 10 room with eight foot ceilings, we know they need, what is it, 106, 320 square feet um, they need to cover with one coat. Uh, if they're not using a primer, we probably you're probably going to recommend two coats. So we're probably going to recommend at the minimum two gallons of paint um, for that project for the customer. The, the, you know, the most aggravating thing if you've ever painted is underbuying the paint because who wants to stop in the middle of the project, go back to the hardware store to get an additional gallon? I'd rather have everything I need right there, not make any extra trips. I want to get the project done, right? So let's ask them how big the room is. Now, chances of them knowing the exact dimensions of their room are very low, but they can probably give you a good guesstimation of how big the room is, right? So um, let's try to drill that down so we can make the right recommendation for the numbers of gallons of paint they need. Now, after we know that, we need to know what they're covering, right? Are they going from a, a, a dark color to a light color? Um, do they have stains on the walls or uh, any smoke damage, right? Or any of that type of stuff um, that is currently on the walls. And that'll let us know if we need to recommend a primer or not. If you're going from a dark color to a light color, um, you know, I, even though it's a paint and primer in one, that dark color on the, on the wall is still gonna affect that top coat color. Um, so to avoid that and get the true color out of your gallon of paint, we need to prime the wall. Um, and that's just gonna seal that color out, right? And it's gonna, again, that's where that stain blocking will come in as well. Um, we'll block that old color out and we'll get the true color that we need, uh, that we're trying to accomplish with the gallon of paint we're buying. This is also actually gonna cut down the cost or, or the spend for the consumer as well. Um, you know, a gallon of Kills 3 is 25 bucks, a gallon of Magnolia is 45 bucks. So, um, you know, we can use primer to help cut down uh, the cost of the spend at the register for, the, for some of those more price sensitive customers, right? Um, 
So that's great. We got the paint in the customer's hand. Um, you know, they're walking out. They're, we don't want them to walk out just with the paint, right? So once we have the paint, how do we apply the paint? And that's where this new applicator set comes in. Obviously, you've probably noticed in your store, uh, new packaging on the Ace Label stuff, uh, some new products in that mix, and overall a brand new set in, in most cases, right? Um, so what does it all mean? What should we be recommending with what? And what are the differences between this program and the other program? The first main difference is we went to this good, better, best strategy. And then obviously we still have a section in there to cater to the pro, whether it be Purdy or Wooster, right? Um, so, and, and we call this out on the labeling uh, just so uh, to make it easier for the customer. If I'm buying one of the best paints, I should probably be using some of the best applicators. I don't know why it keeps doing that on its own, but um, try to fix it next time. Um, you know, if I'm buying a mid-tier paint, maybe I should be going to this better category, right? Um, and then, so we'll dive into some of that. So what changed? Uh, to dive into the brushes first, you had your old Ace Supreme brushes. It was actually a, a pretty good brush um, for the price point, but we actually just took some of it. We made a lot of improvements. And some of those improvements, you're actually going to get 4% more paint release on the new Ace brushes versus what you used to have. Um, so you're going to get better. And all that means is you're going to get better coverage uh, as you're using that brush. Um, we kept the sanded wood handle to keep that comfortable grip um, to prevent it from sliding, especially, you know, if your hands are sweaty or, or clammy, you don't want that brush kind of slipping out of your hands and falling onto the floor. Um, with the bristles, what we did, um, you know, we went from basically a, a um, you know, uh, no, that's the other one, never mind. Uh, so we have these chemically tapered bristles that are solid. And what this does, chemically dipped, uh, you can't do that in the U.S., so you typically won't find that on, like, uh, all these, uh, like, Wooster and Purdy, who are, you know, manufactured 100% in the U.S. So we chemically uh, dip these tapered filaments um, and what that does is it, it creates this very fine point at the end of the brush which is actually going to give the customer uh, more control of what they're painting and it's going to reduce a lot of the brush marks that you typically see in paints. Uh, we changed the ferrule from a copper plated stainless steel ferrule over to just a copper ferrule um, and what this is going to do is just add more rust protection more solvent resistance um, and then we attach those ferrules with these ringed inodized nails um, and it's just going to give this brush a, a durability a long-term durability um, because this is not a one-time use brush um, they can actually buy these brushes they can clean these brushes and they can use them on multiple projects right because um, they're very high quality brushes uh, the sizes from two inch and above, we actually put this metal uh, insert inside the ferrule as well. So if you don't know how a brush is made, um, typically a high quality brush, they take the filaments and they're kind of these long, long filaments, right? These long bristles and they fold them. Well, when you fold them, if you don't put anything in there to kind of keep the two sides separate to actually hold the paint and create that void in there, um, the brush will just start getting mingled and it won't perform well. So um, in a lot of companies actually use a plastic insert. We actually put a metal insert in there um, just for more durability and, um, you know, better paint hold. Um, so, and really you're going to be recommending these brushes for uh, anything Magnolia, Regal, Aura, right? These are high quality brushes and, you know, if they're buying those paints, they should not be buying anything less than the ACE best um, category uh, to apply these paints, right? Um, and the beauty of these new brushes is they come broken in. And what I mean by that is, you know, there's a, for instance, like a, a, a pro type of brush, you know, it takes about 1500 linear feet to actually break that brush in and get the true performance out of that brush. The new ACE brushes are actually being shipped to the store already broken in. This whole program has been designed for the DIYer, um, you know, to give them the best experience possible. And, and that's why we did that. And to top it off, the margin on the new brushes versus the old brushes are a lot higher, as you can see on there. Um, so it's going to benefit you, the benefit of the store and the customer. And, you know, depending what your pay scale is, it could benefit you, right? Um, 
Now, moving over to the Ace Better brushes, um, this is where we're gonna see the biggest change uh, from the Ace One Coat brushes. We have 52% more pickup with these brushes and 48% more paint release. So the performance of these brushes versus the old brushes are far beyond anyone's expectations. Um, and the quality level is basically gone from here to here on these brushes. So. Um, a few of the changes we made, we went to a stained wood handle versus that regular uh, sanded wood handle. And the reason for that is we wanted to differentiate uh, between the quality levels of the better and the best, right? Um, you know, if, if you're going for, you're more price sensitive and you're going, you're shopping in that better category, you know, uh, we wanted the customer to be able to know you know, okay, I'm not getting the best of the best, but I'm getting a good quality brush, right? Um, so that was one of the reasons for that. Now, as far as the filaments go on here, we have a mixture of solid and hollow filaments. And that's actually how we were able to get this uh, better paint pickup and better paint release out of these brushes versus the old ones. The old brushes were just a solid polyester filament. Um, and, you know, as we go through you'll kind of see um, the differences of kind of where those old AS1 coats really would have fell uh, in this good, better, best strategy. Um, so the, the, the mixture between the solid and the hollow filaments is really is what's going to maximize the um, performance of this brush and you can use it on any surface. Again, we, uh, with the, with the tips of these, we flagged and tipped them, the filaments as well. Um, it basically, all that means is uh, we cut we cut the angles or we cut the bristles and then we basically sand them down to give them uh, a fine point again. Now it's not as fine of a point as a chemically dipped brush, but it is still a fine point and is gonna minimize uh, any brush strokes and things like that for you as well. Uh, we went to a stainless steel ferrule on this one uh, as opposed to just a, a steel. Um, and again, that's gonna provide rust resistance and solvent resistance and we attach them with the same nails. So uh, typically we're gonna, and then we kept the metal inserts in these as well for the two inch and above. Uh, we're typically going to recommend these brushes with like Clark and Kensington and Royal paints, right? These middle price point uh, paints um, kind of go with these brushes. And then you can, again, the margin contribution uh, for these uh, for the store. Now we added this new category, which is called Ace Good, or they're going to have the Home Plus label on the brushes. Uh, these are really nothing to write home about. Uh, they are opening price, price point bus brushes. Uh, they're single use. You buy them, you use them, you toss them, and that's it. They're really only recommended for any utility projects. You're not going to find any angle sash brushes in this category because we don't want people um, buying the opening price point brushes when they should be using a, a better or a best brush to apply their paint uh, in their walls. These are, you know, again, utility brushes. And you can kind of see it's a plastic handle, which is pretty lightweight, uh, but solid polyester bristle is what we've gone with here in a steel ferrule. Now, if you remember back to the last slide, that's kind of the specs on the old ACE one coat. Um, so you will still get performance out of these, but um, again, we shouldn't really be recommending these for anything. This is the opening price point. This stuff is just gonna sell itself. Uh, another thing we added that is actually in that good category, um, and that was it's really only there because we needed to find a home for it. It's kind of next to the artist brushes uh, in the set um, is these Pro Edge Precision Brushes. If you haven't used one, I suggest policy aing one and using it. I will never use a, another brush again for um, getting uh, some of those tight spots on the trim and doorways and, and all that. Like this thing is awesome. So it's got that it's got a really sharp point at the end, as you can see in the picture, uh, to give you very clean lines and a lot of control. Um, and your that round shape kind of maximizes your control. You can basically hold this brush like a pencil uh, and, and just mac maximize your control on these. So um, we should be recommending these pretty much with any project that they're doing trim work. Um, we should be recommending these brushes or tight spots as well around, you know, door handles or around, uh, you know, like if you're doing a piece of furniture around the, the drawer handle or something like that. So uh, now getting into the roller covers, um, 
we've transitioned from a, a, a knit nap material on the old A Supreme to a true white woven material on this uh, first roller cover in the Ace Best category. Uh, with this, you're actually getting 16% more paint pickup, 34% 30, 34% more paint release, right? So you, you're just gonna be able to finish the job quicker and get a more even coat on the wall uh, with these new roller covers uh, and it is shed free, which is actually a lot higher quality than having a shed resistant um, roller cover. So uh, you don't have to worry about all that shed and lint getting onto the walls uh, when you're using these. Um, we recommend this on a semi-smooth semi surface. Um, if we look at the core, it's a two ply polypropylene core. Uh, versus just having a, a, a traditional plastic core. So the core is going to be a lot stronger. It's going to hold up to solvents better. Um, this is a very professional quality brush, or I'm sorry, roller cover. Um, and this should be used with all your high quality paints. Again, uh, Aura, Regal, Magnolia, right? This is what we should be selling this with. Um, on the flip side of that, we've added some new stuff. Uh, to this best category that most stores did not currently carry. And the first one is microfiber. As we all know, if we can look around a store, microfiber has just kind of been taking up more and more space uh, over the years in cleaning. Well, now we're transitioning over the paint. And with the microfiber roller covers, uh, you know, the performer, you're just getting, getting a lot more production out of these than you normally would uh, because you're holding more paint than a knit roller cover and you're getting the finish of a woven. Um, so you're getting the, you're combining the best of both worlds uh, with these. And I, again, I, there's not another roller cover I'll ever use it at my personal home other than these microfibers uh, just because of the even paint release you get and the control you get out of these with the amount of paint it holds is it, just incredible. Typically when you're taught to paint, you're taught to do that W and do sections. So you do the top W first, the bottom W um, and, and, and kind of go from there and move your way down along the wall. Well, with these, you can pretty much do that whole one section from Feeling the floor with that one W and, and not really knock that out. I mean, the production on these is, is awesome. So it means less bending down to the paint tray um, and you're just getting overall better coverage. 25% uh, more actually, uh, as you can see on the slide. Hey, uh, can you, again, can, yes. Can you hear me? I'm sorry to interrupt. We only have a couple more minutes for your part and then we have lots of questions. How much more do you have to cover? Uh, a lot, but we'll speed it up. <laughs> okay, well, I only, I mean, we've got a, basically about three more minutes and then we have to do five minutes of questions. Okay, uh, I'll try to speed through this then. So, I mean, if there's stuff you want to skip through to get main points, I would go that direction. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so microfiber recommended with all your high premium paints. Uh, the polyamide... Uh, excels where the microfiber doesn't and that's on exterior rough surfaces which is like brick or, or masonry so it's basically the exterior equivalent to the microfiber and this is new to the stores as well so if they're doing an outside surface brick or anything like that make sure we are uh, talking about that polyamide uh, roller cover the ace better you can see here uh, you're getting a lot more paint pickup versus the old one um, and the cool part about these is that because of the material we use, it has a spring action uh, kind of built into the fibers that's going to help push paint into valleys and cracks into anything you're, you're using these on. So recommend this with Clark and Kensington Royal. Again, um, something to keep in mind with this applicators. If it says better, uh, Clark and Kensington Royal, if it's ace best, you know, our premium paints. Um, so we'll go through there. Uh, other notables, all your mini roller programs are now going to um, match the nine inch counterpart um, to it in its series. And that's very important for the finish and it's going to prevent picture framing and things like that. And then, uh, you know, obviously we have the trays and all that. So ACE best premium, ACE better middle price point, ACE good, just one-time use uh, on that stuff. Um, 
on, on all these categories to get into paint real quick. I, I do want to, we got to touch on at least on frog tape. Um, there's three different SKUs of frog tape you have in your store. Frog tape is the most profitable painters tape in that set. Um, and you have the green, the yellow, and now the new blue four pack. So the difference is really is the, the green is a 21 day clean release tape, meaning you can leave it on the wall for up to 21 days without it tearing off any um, of the paint as you go. Uh, the yellow is a delicate and it's a 60 day clean release. It's a lighter adhesion and it's more for painted walls, trim, wallpaper, faux finishes, things that have been freshly done. Uh, that's where you'll use that one. And then the new uh, four pack is a 14 day. Other than that, it has all the same qualities as the green. Um, moving forward, these are some of the other uh, painters tape. So the green is an eight day tape. So if I start a project on Friday, I have through next weekend basically to finish that product to pull it off of the uh, of the wall without damaging any of the work I've done. So that's the painters make green. It's actually the second most profitable. And then you have your A's blue, which is a 14 day. And then the the beige is a, a, a contractor grade. It's a three day removal that should be more used for securing floor coverings and then going over with a traditional painter's tape. Um, and then duct tape, I believe this is last side. Uh, I, I'll leave it here. T-Rex makes the store $1.25 more profit versus Gorilla for the same exact performance. They perform exactly the same. You make more on T-Rex. So um, the customer wins, the store wins. So just kind of make sure that uh, we are referring to T-Rex. So that's all I got. Questions? I can't hear you, Diana. Sorry, sorry. Not oh, used to people not being able to hear me. Um, <laughs> in the Magnolia line, is the mildew resistance only within the wall paint or also in trim and chalk paints? Uh, it, I don't know about the chalk paint. That is a good question. I, I have to look in there. In the trim and cabinetry, it does exist, yes. OK. And then. Um, What's most aggressive cleaner you can use without damaging finish? So uh, refer to that scrub test video on the website I gave you. Okay. Any paint that you use, if you read the directions, right, um, in practicality, what they say is use a light towel, a light damp towel um, in non-abrasive cleaners. Um, so uh, that holds true for any paint. But when you look at the scrub test, you'll see the, what we put the Magnolia paint through. And I mean, they use Comet and they're dumping water on it and, and, and the paint finish still doesn't come off. So, um, you know, I don't ever recommend to use an abrasive cleaner like Comet. But if you use like a, an all purpose cleaner or something like that, it, you know, you shouldn't notice a huge difference. But follow the recommended um, cleaning instructions on a gallon of paint, which is typically a damp cloth uh in a non-abrasive cleaner you mind if i just interject with the code word i was oh, okay oh, i totally forgot it's okay <laughs> Sorry, i was gonna do that too am go ahead code word is joanna code word is joanna should be easy enough right all right keith the next question how can the same brush be used on water-based paint and oil-based stain um, it, it all breaks down to the filaments. Um, I don't know the exact science behind it, but um, it, it really comes down to the filaments and how well the filaments are going to hold that. You got to keep in mind, most of all the brushes have been designed really for oil-based paints and water-based paints. So using a, you know, a, a brush on an oil-based stain is almost equivalent to an oil-based paint. The paint's gonna be a little bit thicker in most cases, um, but it really break down to the filaments. And anytime we're recommending a, a brush for staining versus a pad, you know, just refer them over because you have the, the, the staining brushes within the set, just kind of refer them to those, um, even though you can use all these other ones on, on, on oil-based stains. Um, I don't know, again, I don't know the exact science behind it. I, I would have to find out. Okay, what's an effective method for cleaning a brush? Um, depending on the paint, uh, water, <laughs> just soap and water, uh, some dish soap, uh, you know, I use Dawn, it works really good. 
um, to clean out these brushes. Um, you, again, you don't want to really use an abrasive or, uh, you know, getting into paint strippers and, and mineral spirits and all that because that can actually damage the integrity of the bristle. Um, if it's a latex paint, soap and water. Uh, if it's an oil-based paint, then you, you do need to refer to mineral spirits. Um, you know, the brush combs always work well. Um, you know, even one of the painter's tools, you know, the, the, the scrapers have those uh, brush cleaners in them to get some of the real strong gunk off that typically forms down by the ferrule. Okay. Use Pro Edge to cut ceiling to wall in lieu of brush? Question mark. Um, so the the precision brush, yeah, not in lieu of, in addition to, um, you know, if you got to, we have two levels of DIYers, right? You have those expert DIYers who just do projects all the time and really know what they're doing and are dialed in, right? And then we just have the regular DIYer who may not be as comfortable or as skillful um, in what the precision brush would actually allow them to do is use their normal brush, get really close. And they can use that precision brush to really create that fine line uh, between the ceiling and the wall and give them a real straight edge. Cause again, you can hold it like a pencil. Everyone knows how to hold a pencil, um, at least our generation. Um, so, uh, you know, it'll give them a lot more control. So I would say in, in addition to, not in lieu of, yes. Okay, can microfiber rollers be cleaned and be used without step down in performance? Yes, 100%. Uh, obviously you gotta clean it uh, properly. And again, using one of those painting tools it typically has that roller cleaner edge on it. Um, you know, using one of those and cleaning out, you gotta make sure with any roller, you got to make sure you clean it out thoroughly, but if you clean it out properly, you can use that thing over and over and over again, yes. And the last question was, we don't sell Royal any longer, do we? Adam? Uh, <laughs> some stores do still sell Royal. Other stores okay. have elected to get it out of it, but yes. Okay. All right. Keith, thank you so much. That was awesome. Actually, we're going to have Brandy start us off. Um, we're going to talk about uh, three of our brands today. We're going to be talking Purdy Brushes, uh, Minwax Stain, and Cabot Stain. So with that, I will turn it over to Brandy. Awesome. Thank you, Rick. Good morning, ACE team. Super excited to be here. Wish we were doing this in person, um, as I'm sure you guys are all too. Um, but we're going to make the best of it. And uh, yes, please ask plenty of questions. My name is Brandy White. I'm the regional manager for the central portion of the United States. And with me is Mr. Rick Olson, who covers Wisconsin and most of Illinois. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into it. I know you guys just learned about the ACE band paintbrushes. So this is a great segue into uh, Purdy paintbrushes. So we're gonna kick this off with a little video. Hopefully everybody can hear the audio. In more than 85 years of dedication to crafting high quality brushes by hand, we have never compromised our products. In that time, we've also learned that different applications and paints require different brushes. This video will help you choose which brush is best for you and for the specific conditions of various jobs. The brush you should choose depends on several factors the type of paint you're using, the surface you're painting, and environmental factors like temperature and humidity all need to be considered. When painting with oil-based paints, brushes with softer filaments like the natural white bristle brush will work best. For stains and clears, use a natural bristle brush like Oxhair or a soft synthetic brush like Syntox. These brushes are ideal for picking up and applying these types of paints and stains. If you're using water-based and latex paints, use brushes with synthetic filaments like Nylox, XL, ClearCut, or Chinex. If you are in need of an all-purpose brush that can withstand any job, consider Purdy XL Elite or Pro Extra. These brushes have stiffer filaments, making them more durable than natural filament brushes and can handle a wide range of paints and substrates. All Purdy brushes are designed to make painting easier and more accurate 
So no matter which Purdy brush you choose for the job, you'll know that it will help create the best finish possible. Visit purdy.com to learn more about our brushes. Use our helpful tool selector or search our resources section for tips and techniques. When pros demand quality, Purdy delivers. Awesome. Life-changing video, time. right? Oh, sorry about that. All right, so let's dive into Purdy brushes. So we at Sherwin-Williams, we carry a lot of brands and you guys carry a lot of our brands in your stores. Purdy is definitely one of them. Um, Purdy is probably the most recognized brush uh, by professional painters. Um, and this would follow any good, better, best strategy when selling in your stores. And Purdy brush, um, obviously Rick and I are a bit biased, but we feel it's the best brush that you have inside your stores. So. Just a little bit about Purdy. Um, it's 100% crafted in the United States, uh, which you know can be hard to come by these days. I just wanna to talk to you a little bit about the, the craftsmanship of this brush. You'll see here on the screen, you have the, uh, the keeper, right? And nine times out of 10, painters get home, they're excited to get that color up on their walls. They take the paint brush out of the package and they toss this. Uh, don't throw this away. We call it a keeper for a reason. It's to keep it. Um, it's lined on the inside so that when you're done cleaning your brush and you got all the excess moisture out, you can put it back in the keeper, hang it up, and then that way it won't be stiff as a board and it's nice and clean. And it'll hold its shape for the next time you go to do a paint job. So you'll see on the screen here, we have the Purdy XL brush. That's probably our most popular brush. It's our most versatile brush. And the cool thing about the keepers is it acts as like a silent sales aid, not only for you guys as the associates, but also for our customers. So you'll see here on this keeper, it'll tell you what the stiffness indicator is. So the XLs are medium stiff, which is great for kind of your novice painter. Um, it tells you what the brush is made of. So whether it's a straight nylon blend or a polyester blend or a nylon and polyester blend. And then it'll tell you what kind of paint you should be using the, the specific brush with. So, um, you know, most of what we carry in store these days is uh, latex based, but obviously we do have pretty brushes that will meet your oil based needs as well. And then last but not least, we have different uh, brush sizes. So we have, you know, one inch brush, one and a half, two inch, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, uh, so on and so forth. And then we do have angled and flat brushes, which is usually up to the, uh, the customer as to what their preference is. So we're just gonna do a quick hit on most of our popular brushes. Uh, like I said, Purdy XL, if you don't know what to sell a customer, you can never go wrong with the Purdy XL brush. Um, it's our most versatile brush. Uh, it's probably our best selling SKU through the ACE RSCs um, and gets the job done. So um, the XL will probably be your number one seller. The clear cut, uh, which is the one here in the center, uh, awesome stiff bristles that make cutting in super easy. So. I haven't quite mastered the cutting in without tape yet. <laughs> I'm getting in closer and closer every time I paint, uh, but the clear cut brush certainly uh, can get you some pretty clean lines without tape. And then last but certainly not least, our uh, rising in popularity brush is our Pro Extra brush, which is the one that I have here live today. Um, this has uh, the ability to hold a lot more paint so you can go uh, further on the wall and less trips to your bucket. We have another video, super exciting, on how to choose a roller cover. In more than 85 years of experience, we've learned what it takes to make the best painting tools in the industry. In that time, we've also learned that different applications and paints require more than just a brush. You'll need the proper roller cover for bigger jobs. This video will help you choose which Purdy roller cover is best for you and your specific job conditions. The roller cover you should choose depends on several factors. The type of paint you're using, the surface you are painting, and environmental factors such as temperature and humidity, all of which can affect the finish quality of your work. Many of you know that rollers are typically used for painting large interior and exterior spaces after you've cut in. 
Purdy offers the highest quality roller cover fabrics, including woven, microfiber, polyester, lamb's wool, and a blend of various materials. Each is designed to deliver the best possible finish on a variety of surfaces. Purdy has an exclusive line of finishing covers for interiors where a smooth finish is desired and a line of production covers for rough exterior surfaces and larger jobs where productivity is important. You'll want to use a shorter nap roller cover for a smoother finish on interior walls. If you're painting with an enamel paint, woven covers are what you would use. If you're using an oil or water-based flat paint, use a knitted roller cover. For exterior jobs or inside jobs with a rougher surface like brick or cinder block, use a roller cover with a larger nap. This provides better paint pickup and release to coat uneven surfaces more efficiently. Remember, there's a proper roller cover for virtually every surface, and using the right purdy roller cover will make your finish look its best. For more information about our rollers, visit purdy.com. When pros demand quality, Purdy delivers. Awesome. So roller cover anatomy, right? <laughs> so it starts with the core. Now your entry level price point uh, roller covers are usually just plastic. And for many of you, I'm sure you've been there where you've done a paint job and you start rolling and then the roller cover starts to walk off the cage. That's because of a flimsy core. Nine times out of 10 people press it back into the wall they just painted and then hurry try to paint over it, right? Um, so our cores are nice, heavy duty. And as a matter of fact, I would do this in store or in person if we were in person. You could take a purdy roller cover and you can stand on it and it's not gonna bend, it's not gonna bow, it's not gonna break. Um, so it really snugs up against a roller cage so that you don't have that walking issue. Uh, fabric is another important part of any roller cover. Uh, typically you'll see knit or woven and we can jump into that right away as far as what's best. So knit applicators will give you uh, a, a faster uh, finish as far as the pickup and release is great. So you can get your job done in half the time. Um, woven you would use for like semi-gloss and gloss uh, sheen paints. So um, the second part is it, it is adhesive, right? So how do we get that fabric onto that core? And some of the inexpensive roller covers that are out there, you'll notice that they shed, right? Um, our purdy roller covers go through extra spin tests so that you don't have that, sh that shedding because the last thing we want to do is shave our wall once we're done painting it, right? Um, just like our purdy paint brushes, uh, you know, we, we kind of make it simple, not only for the customers, but for the associates to sell. So you can see with our pretty white dove roller cover, um, it tells you that it's a woven fabric and then it gives you the nap size. So if you think of nap size as fingers, how long are those fingers going to be, right? To get into those peaks and valleys of the wall. So typically we see our customers anywhere between three eighths and half inch nap uh, for standard everyday jobs. Um, so here's our three most popular roller covers. We have the Purdy White Dove. Again, that's our woven uh, fabric roller cover. Our contractor first. Uh, you guys have these also available in three packs. Uh, this is great for the pros, uh, super quick to get the job done. And then last but not least, our Marathon Roller Cover, which is probably our most durable roller cover um, and great for, uh, you know, multiple uses if you clean properly. So just a few fun facts about Purdy and why it's different than anything else you sell in your stores. Um, like I alluded to before, they're made in the US. Um, they're all flagged and tipped. So, you know, women, we, we, we struggle not to have split ends in our hair, but we want split ends in our paintbrush. And so what flag means is that it, they'll go in and they'll, um, flag each one of these filaments separately to make like three to five fingers per filament. And what that does is just gives you more release on the wall, less trips to your bucket. Um, made with alder wood handles, so it's uh, nice hard wood. Wood handles are super important, especially unfinished wooden handles, because if you've ever painted with a plastic brush, you'll notice that you start to sweat. The more you sweat, the tighter you grip. Before you know it, you've got hand fatigue, shoulder fatigue, neck fatigue, on and on and on. 
And then last but not least, when you're selling these paintbrushes to your customers, I would recommend take the keeper off and put it in their hand. Um, they'll be able to feel the difference with the pretty brush. Uh, the name of the brush maker is actually on the brush itself on this yellow sticker. Um, they take a lot of pride in these. These are all made by hand. Um, and I, I've been lucky enough to make my own Purdy paintbrush. Of course, I didn't get the Purdy sticker because uh, mine was not of high quality as the ones that they typically make. <laughs> um, and then just so you guys are aware, we have our mini uh, rollers as well. All of those are the exact same uh, fabric as you would find in our, in our full nine inch uh, roller covers. And just be on the lookout. Um, most of your stores, you guys went through some level three resets. Um, and part of that was bringing in uh, more Purdy SKUs. So last week, our Purdy in-store kits shipped. So you guys should be seeing these soon. These are great. If we didn't cover enough or in-depth for you during this training, um, these in-store kits will certainly help. They come with the Y Purdy guides. It has a pocket guide, so you can easily match you know, your bulk paint to, you know, whatever pretty applicator. We have an Island Vader that helps explain it to the customers. And then we're also sending you guys some pretty branded t-shirts to uh, really boast the brand inside your paint departments. So without further ado, I'm going to kick this over to my handsome sidekick, Mr. Rick Olson. Well, thank you, Brandy. Um, before I get started with Minwax, I do want to give you guys your password for this session. And the password would be Purdy Brushes. So pretty easy to remember. Um, with that said, we're gonna start on Minwax. Um, Minwax is probably the most widely recognized stain in the United States. And I learned this through one of my trainings that 87% of all interior stains sold in the United States is Minwax. So that goes to show you, I'm sure you all have it and do pretty well with it. Um, so with this slide here, I'd like to talk about our new labels and I'm sure you're starting to see these now. Um, there, there's no change in, you know, the user experience. Um, the colors are exactly the same as, is the colors that, that you're used to. Um, the big difference is that this, uh, dries in under two hours. It's one coat coverage. And with the next slide, we'll show you some of the label improvements. So as you can see, um, the new improved label uh, has the color prominently, you know, on the, the can. Um, the other difference, you, you turn the can around and you see, um, you know, it gives you a pretty good listing of what to do, how to do it. Um, you've got, you know, your pre-stain, how to apply it with brush or rag, um, the dry time before wiping it off, which is five to 15 minutes. And then it tells you how to clean up your, uh, your rag. You let that dry, you don't, you know, uh, due to spontaneous combustion, you don't wanna throw a wet, wet rag away. So um, basically that, um, and then, you need to wait six hours before applying the finish coat. And then below that, project tips, it tells you how to prep it with 220 grit sandpaper, uh, using the pre-stained wood conditioner, which we'll talk about a little later, and then um, you know how to go about staining. They always recommend to test the color first before you start the whole project. Do an inconspicuous spot with the color and then kind of play with that. So. Um, next slide, please. So here's the pre-stain conditioner. Um, basically what this is, it's, it's almost like a, a primer for paint, um, or this would, you'd be priming your, your stain actually. Um, what you do here is you would sand and then you'd use this pre-stain conditioner and basically it's good on soft wood. So a lot of times you'll have, um, you know, a softer wood that you want to make look like oak. You might have pine trim, and that's especially important to use a pre-stain conditioner with that because uh, that will prevent it from being blotchy. It'll be 
uh, when you put your stain over the pre-stain, it'll be a more uniform finish. This is how to minwax. We're going to show you how to apply our wood finish water-based color stains like a pro. So before we get started, we'll explain the difference between solid and semi-transparent water-based color stains. Solid hides the wood grain, but maintains the texture, whereas semi-transparent color stains showcase the wood grain. Pretty simple, huh? So here's what you'll need for your project. Our water-based pre-stained wood conditioner, a water-based color stain in either semi-transparent or solid, and our polycrylic protective top coat. You'll also need medium to fine grit sandpaper, rubber gloves, purdy synthetic brushes, a drop cloth, stir sticks, a few lint-free rags, and if you're using a solid color stain, a synthetic applicator pad. Okay, ready to start finishing? Let's do it. There are three simple steps to staining. Prep, stain, and protect. So we're going to start, of course, with prep. Before sanding, make sure the wood is clean and dry. Then start with a medium grit sandpaper and increase grit as you go. You should finish with a 220 grit sandpaper. Then clean off all the sanding dust. When the wood feels smooth, condition with our water-based pre-stained wood conditioner to help you reach the most uniform color. Allow one to five minutes to penetrate and then wipe with a lint-free rag. After 15 to 30 minutes, lightly sand the surface with a 220 grit sandpaper and wipe off the sanding dust. Now you can stir your stain thoroughly. It's always a good idea to pretest the color in a hidden spot by applying and wiping in the direction of the wood grain. You can now start staining by going with the grain using a purdy synthetic brush. Then immediately wipe in the direction of the wood grain to remove the excess stain. Since we're staining with a solid color, we need to use a synthetic pad to remove the excess stain. But if you're applying a semi-transparent stain, use a lint-free rag to remove the excess stain. For a bolder look, wait two hours and repeat the application process. Otherwise, after two to three hours, it's time to protect. Apply a thin coat of our polycrylic protective top coat in the direction of the wood grain. It goes on milky white, but after two hours, it'll dry clear. When it's dry, sand lightly with a 200 grit sandpaper, remove the dust, and repeat the top coat process one or two more times for optimal protection. So that's it. Simple process, colorful results. Thanks for watching. This, this. So with water-based stains, we have two of them. We have a semi-transparent and a solid bodied. Uh, with the semi-transparent, um, it's a penetrating heavy body stain for easy application and control. It highlights the natural grain of the wood. Now this product is tenable in 200 plus colors, including all the Minwax package colors. So you can um, definitely, you know, tint a wide variety of colors. With this product, it's dry or you can recoat in one hour um, and allow two hours for the clear coating over the top of it. We have four new SKUs. We have a clear tint base and a pure white tint base. Uh, we have a classic gray and a true black. And then the second one is we do have a solid color. Um, same principles as a semi-transparent, but you will be able to feel the grain. Uh, it hides the grain, but you'll be able to feel the texture of that wood. And that's the difference between that and, you know, painted cabinets are very popular, you know, using solid colors. Well, this is similar, except for the fact that you will get that texture of the wood, which a lot of people do like. So um, this is going to be a very good selling product for you guys. So as far as top coating with clears, we have a new low sheen um, 
product that uh, um, goes along with our current gloss, semi-gloss, satin, and matte. Um, you know, it, it protects the surface. Um, it's perfect for maintaining true color. And it does go on milky, like the video said. It goes on milky, but then when it starts to dry, it'll dry crystal clear. And you can also use it on bare wood just to protect the wood or over any water-based stain or oil-based stain. Now we're gonna switch gears and go to exterior stain, which is our Cabot product, which I'm sure most stores do carry. Uh, and we will also talk here about Cabot's new um, labeling. Basically, uh, the new labels have the same banding, the color. Uh, next slide, please. What's inside a can of Cabot is built for looks and made to last. We did the same for the outside. So basically that just shows you all the new labels in all the different sheens uh, or um, uh, opacities. So basically the new Cabot labels, I mean, they're designed for the pro. Uh, it has a clear message on the shelf and we needed a more premium look. And again, you know, the color banding is similar to what you have now. So the semi-transparent that you have now is the same color that you'll notice here. Um, another difference here is that we're putting lifetime guarantee on all our products. So, um, you know, that's, that's a clear benefit. The other thing to notice is we will show the opacity. And when we do have package colors, you'll notice the color on the can with, <clears throat> with the wood background there. So, um, you know, it'll talk about the opacities and, um, you know, the wood, wood splotches. And then, you know, we talk about some of the features and benefits, one coat coverage, uh, oil-based performance, um, although you guys are on the VOC oil, low VOC. So, um, but really nothing's changed uh, with the products. It's a good looking label, Rick. Oh yeah, these are great looking. Um, you've got the clear, the wood tone, the semi-transparent, semi-solid and solid. And again, that banding, um, I mean, and the wood swatches in the background, I mean, lifetime guarantee looks great. So we'll quickly go through um, how the opacities work. So here you can see we have clear, we have a toner, we have semi-solid. Um, semi-transparent, solid, and then the resurfacer, which I'm sure many of you guys do stock. Um, first off, we have the clear, which it has little or no pigmentation and limited L, uh, UV protection. So basically you're looking like if you're putting on a clear, you might get you know one year, maybe a little longer on a clear, one year of durability before it starts to break down. Generally speaking, the more colorant you have in a product, the longer it will last. So this, you would put on an untreated new deck or, or something that hasn't been treated before, you'd put that on just to maintain that clear look. Uh, the next slide up would be the toner, which has very limited colorant, but just to give it that little, um, little extra. And basically, um, you know, you're still gonna be able to see that wood grain. And with the toner, you generally get maybe two, if you're lucky, three years of durability out of this product. Uh, again, it doesn't have very much pigment in it. The next would be your semi-transparent or semi-solid. 
I'm sure uh, many of you stock the semi-transparent as it is very, very popular. Um, when we move to semi-solid, that would be your semi-solid deck stain, the green banded product. And basically you're just getting a little bit more protection, maybe three to five years of protection with these products, um, you know, due to the fact that they do have a little bit more pigmentation. And these two products too, you know, when you're talking about staining a deck or siding, they can go over the toners or the clears, you know, after proper prep preparation, um, you know, they will, will cover over that, but you can still see some of the grains. Hey, Rick, just to let you know, you got about five more minutes until we go to questions. Okay, we're almost done. Thank you. Perfect. All righty. Uh, and then uh, moving up the ladder, we've got the solid, which is, um, it will cover all the grains. It's film forming. It's kind of like a painted appearance. And you're looking at five plus years of durability on this product due to all the colorant that it does have. And again, you know, proper preparation makes that makes that happen. So um, yeah, these are great products. And um, next slide, please. And then we have the completely opaque and textured uh, resurfacer called Deck Correct. And this is probably one of our um, most popular products. Uh, it's been out for about six, seven years. And this is for decks that are kind of distressed, that they're cracked, and you've got this um, little texture that kind of fills those cracks and um, really does a nice job. I mean, you can, instead of replacing your deck, you use a product like this and it's much cheaper to, to go about it that way. So um, great product. And that is it for for our presentation. Um, before I field some questions, um, I'm gonna reiterate the uh, password, which is Purdy Brushes. Awesome, thank you so much, Brandy and Rick. Uh, we only have a couple questions. The first one is, can we get cheat sheets with roller and brush details at our stores? Yes. Uh, we can actually, I don't know what the, how the best way to go about that is. We can send it to Keith or Adam and then um, have it dispersed from there, but we can certainly do that for you guys. Yes. Yep. That would be perfect. Thank you. The next question is how does a saltwater pool affect cabbage stain less years protection question? As far as, go ahead, Rick. Well, it would make the warranty pretty much non, null and void. I mean, salt water, it, it will just destroy um, any coating. So, you know, I don't know how we, uh, you know, do that with our satisfaction guarantee, but it, the, the product will not, it will not hold up. Um, and the last question, how do you recommend applying outdoor stains, roller, pad, or brush? Any of the, any of the above. Um, I like to use a brush. I like to, to work the product into the surface, uh, but you can certainly roll it. Uh, some people will roll it in back brush. If you're using a pad, um, you really want to push that product into the wood surface. The better penetration you have when you're staining um, wood, especially deck boards, um, the better. That's all we have. Randy, awesome. if you send me that uh, document, I'll share it with the group here when we're done. Will do. Thank you. Thank you, Brandy. Thank you. Go ahead, Adam. Sorry. You first. No, I was just going to say the same thing you did. Thank you so much for everything. It was a great presentation. Um, we look forward to seeing you again this afternoon at four o'clock. Okay. Um, ladies and gentlemen that are on the training with us, 
thank you so much for being here today. We hope you learned lots of things. Um, we will be updating an email to your managers and owners with all of the passwords for today. So the way you can prove to them that you were at the training today would be to let them know what the passwords are. Um, we will be forwarding out to your managers and owners any of the information that the presenters have given to Adam to let me know um, to let us know that you guys wanted it. So he'll be forwarding that out too. So feel free to go back to your owners and managers and ask for that information. Um, if anyone has any other last minute questions, feel free to put it in the chat. Otherwise, everyone is free to go and we hope you have an amazing Wednesday.